evening, 6.30. I call the order of the Woodland Park Planning Commission for Thursday, November 10th. Roll we'll call, please. Okay. Um, Chairman Hartsfield? Here. Uh, Commissioner Brown? Here. Commissioner Harvey? Here. Commissioner Kennedy? Here. Commissioner Larson? Here. And uh, Commissioner Nielsen? Here. Please join me with Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On well, tonight's agenda, we have a work session to discuss the code review project and uh, let's look to staff to direction for us tonight? Uh, sure. Um, and I did talk to the chair a little bit about just what to expect timing wise and such. And I'm sure you noticed in the memo that went out, things are a little fluid in terms of what we cover, um, just trying to maximize um, our available time windows. Um, and then depending upon when we have development of cases that potentially eats into like time available to work sessions. So um, that's why it's kind of like definitely chapters one and seven, you know, or one and two, maybe seven, you know, that it's, it's a little more fluid in terms of your homework assignments. So basically we need you to study ahead, you know, going forward. And um, so with this, um, this is um, our second in a series of work sessions related to reviewing an update to our development regulations. And um, the, the scope of the project is to reorganize titles 16, 17, and 18 into a single document uh, there's minimal new content that occurs with this. Uh, we are looking to clarify and update use labels and regulations, uh, ensure that language is clear and uniform, clarify application procedures. Uh, we want our end product to be uh, consistent with state and federal law, and uh, we want this to align with our recently adopted comp plan. And then as we go through things, uh, we may be identifying areas that would benefit from a more in-depth review and update, you know, things that are beyond the scope of this particular project. So then we basically make a to-do list of future projects. Um, so with that, I'm gonna turn things over to our consultant, Jen Garner with Logan Simpson, who will be um, leading our conversation from here through um, the chapters. Great, thank you, Karen. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Um, we're gonna start to walk through chapter one uh, the edits that we've made to chapter one. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. I wonder if we could ask a couple questions before we get into chapter one. Absolutely. Yes, okay. Would that be okay, Jennifer? Yeah, that'd be fine. Go ahead. At the last meeting, work session, we talked about trying to create a, uh, and, and Karen just talked about that a little bit, is the foundation for future, future amendments. Uh, and we don't want to really tackle too many things controversial. Have we thought any bit about where we draw that line? Um, I, I did a little bit. And um, I would say when we're wanting to really dive into substantive detail, um, an example of that would be um, really wanting to uh, review, amend, enhance uh, things like landscaping standards or um, potentially wanting to include like form-based requirements with our architectural guidelines. You know, things that are really gonna um, impact what the development looks like. And uh, you know, that, that's really kind of the threshold for me personally. Um, you know, things where you potentially want to um, engage the community on, you know, do you prefer option A, option B or option C? you know, in terms of, of what things, things look like. As far as process goes and the product that we develop, um, or without the controversial items, do you think the city council is aware that, that, that that's the way we want to move in that direction? That's why I keep inviting them to these work sessions. Okay. So they are a part of this process. And and hearing this message, 
um, you know, and just, it, and you're probably, you're going to hear me reiterate, you know, the, the scope of the project on multiple occasions. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll do our best to stay within the scope of what this is supposed to do, what it needs to look like. Um, you know, that's, that's what I have been tasked with. And uh, what happens once we get it, um, you know, through this, this committee that we come to a, a place where we like, okay, we like this, this proposal, um, you know, what happens after that is kind of what happens after that in that next public hearing. But uh, the goal with you all is to get a, a, a proposal that everybody is reasonably comfortable with and we conduct the hearing and make that recommendation on a proposed ordinance change. I just brought that up because I think it's very important that, uh, you know, if, if we have the mindset that we're looking at just found foundational issues and, and making things clear that by the time we get to it, are we gonna to try to codify that code again at that point? You actually have to do an ordinance change okay. uh, where um, the, the existing chapters are repealed and the new one is adopted. Okay. Well, then I would remind my fellow commissioners and the city council, let's just keep with the easy, simple stuff that we can. And then controversial things, more complicated. We're going to take another crack at that later. That would be my yeah. strong guidance. Because um, there are a number of... Um, smaller things, um, you know, not, things in the code that do need to be cleaned up and addressed. Um, you know, last week when I started with the whole list of somewhat joking issues um, that we, we encounter, um, the fact that um, trying to determine process is a little bit of a scavenger hunt in the code is actually a very accurate description for what we have right now. And that is not um, supportive of the development community or um, the, the minimal staff you have that needs to help guide folks through this. So getting things like that cleaned up where it's a lot easier to find this stuff, it's it, it just cleaner organized, that, that would be a, a tremendous step forward with um, the, the, the city of Woodland Park's regs. Well, that, that, that's, that's a, a big load off my mind personally. And uh, we could work on that and try to get it clean. Another thing, the, the so the information provided in, in the proposed code, is that taken from the most current code available? To the best of my knowledge, yes. That was uh, the information that was provided to um, Logan Simpson that they were working from. And that's part of where we ran into the transition between the prior director and myself, that a lot of that had started under the prior director mm -hmm. in terms of relaying those documents. Uh, the one exception that I was able to identify is um, the, the home daycare regulations that we changed oh. early last mm -hmm. year. And um, I did make sure Jennifer got a copy of that particular ordinance. So while that may not be in this document, we will we'll make sure that gets incorporated. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd also like to ask staff to consider that we're, we're consolidating the mobile home subdivision and zoning regulation. There's, other, uh, there's another uh, land use regulation called uh, Title 19, which d d uh, deals with vested property rights. It'd be nice to be able to get rid of that and consolidate that into this, this as well. And, th and that was all pre a precursor way back when state legislators said that uh, developers needed to know when they had a vested property right with a certain development application. Yeah. Um, I'm used to seeing that actually part of the development code. So it's interesting to me that it is currently a separate title. Um, I do want to touch base with our um, legal counsel on, on that. And um, it, we very well may be in, including that. So it's in a, a more logical place when you're thinking about it from a developer's mindset. Okay. Well, I just strongly encourage that you look at that. Another one is that uh, when I was reading through uh, the proposed code, it'd be very helpful when I'm looking at a certain section that it would also show the areas that were, were eliminated for consideration. Some of the areas have strikeouts. Show me that. But I also noticed there were certain sections of the code that were just completely removed. Yeah. I 
list of yeah, we intentionally know we left out these you know, mm -hmm. and why. That would be a very useful thing to know. I think Valerie would be very helpful to have it right in here if I could see it. Because yeah. I was doing this cross reference well, yeah, thing. The problem you have is because there's stuff from 16 in the section and 17 and 18. So it's like a little like a. Yep. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Was it just uh, relocated? Was it just relocated or is it, uh, you know, that it, you're not finding it in a different chapter? I, I couldn't find it. But... Yeah, there's well, some frankly, that are just are not there. There's is some there a sections difference that are between just blue there. and red? Yes, that's another question. Yeah, we really, no, I think we really need a roadmap uh, because if, if we make a mistake and can't find something, but it's in here, the document fails and we need help in, in, in doing that. Don't let your customers don't open it to where your customers can make a mistake because you've done good work and we missed it. We don't need any help in failing. We're pretty good at that. <laughs> um, Jennifer, can you answer the question about the different color ink? Because when we printed uh, it here, it does, the, the changes do show um, slightly in, in different colors. That is interesting. Um, did you print out the PDFs that we sent? Right well, there. let me tell you what, what can be the difference in the colors um, when different people are editing a document and tracking changes. So you can see on my screen right now, it's all shown in blue um, because I've changed a setting that just says all, all edits shown in the same color. Um, we do ha did have two different authors on this that would have made changes. So that would be um, the, the difference. But typically when we print a PDF, it should have all been in one color. So I am... Um, not 100% certain why yours is showing in two colors, but my, my, that, that is how that, it, how it works in this program here. I can kind of show you if I, I think change. We're, I think we're okay on that, Jennifer. Okay. 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 Next, next one is um, on, under the definition section of the last section, we have no reference numbers to each of those uh, definitions. It's just shown out there without It'd be helpful if we could say, let's look at definition number one or definition mm -hmm. number 47. I, I know it's going to be renumbered eventually when we get to the, the code, but I'm just thinking for we can all be on the same page. That we could say, let's talk about definition number 32 right now. Well, and I'm hesitant to, to do that. They, they are in alphabetical order. Um, so... Um, they will have to get numbered before you're done to put them in the code. Well, and I've actually worked with codes before where the definitions did not have numbers. Um, the, the definition section had a number, and then you just yeah. dealt with the, the alphabetical in them. So I'm not opposed to numbering them eventually, but for our work at this point, I'm not crazy about that. Okay. Because if we make one change and then we go back and, well, what version was that? What number was it? it okay. The difficulty that I saw in it with the, with the definitions was... In the old thing, like on, on Title 16, the definitions that were pertinent to that section were all at the very beginning mm -hmm. of the thing. And the definitions that were that were pertinent to 17 were at the beginning of Section 17, or, or code, whatever, and 18 mm -hmm. was at the beginning of it. If the definitions were at least up in the front of the document, that would be helpful. I didn't, I didn't know where they were at all, because yeah. I <laughs> and didn't find out until I got way back here that there was definitions in the back. But all of the definitions that were in the individual 16, 17, 18 are not in the table of the definitions in the back. So some of them are gone. Just, just an I observation. Had that, that same concern. I thought maybe I was being too nitpicky, but I would prefer the definitions be at the front of this chapter. Just the front of the chapter, in front of this title? The front of this title, I'm sorry. Yeah whatever we're calling this title now, the Unified Development Code. I think one of the key things is without the roadmap as a type two, that tells us two, what we currently have and where that yeah. went to. Mm -hmm. It appears things are missing. It appears definitions are missing, whether they've been changed or not. They don't seem to be there or we missed them. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it would help us to 
to be able to have that roadmap, that traceability to understand what is and what isn't uh, in You're saying definitions the that were the previous versions have been eliminated in this current there version. Well, there's some that they reword, they changed, they changed the wording slightly, which would have moved it to elsewhere. That may be in some cases that could be it. Or are they removed because it was a strike through and they no longer need it? Yeah. yeah. Not too many of those. Well, yeah, I just, you know, from that <laughs> yeah, and, and at this point, I, I wouldn't. You don't know why. They're just not there. Yeah, I wouldn't argue that maybe there's a very good reason that, that maybe some have been deleted from the list that they're not necessary, but I don't know that. Yes. All I know is there's holes. I'm kind of hoping Jennifer's going to explain that rationale, but I, I just, I, just like Valerie, I thought the definition should have been like chapter two instead of chapter seven, because it lays the foundation for the rest of the code or for the rest, rest of the title. Is that how it is currently now? No, it's like Valerie had pointed out. It's It was at the beginning of each title, you saw the definitions that were applicable in that particular title. Uh, and since we've consolidated everything, I, I just I, not hard over on it, but I just think it would be easier to follow if those definitions were up front right after the introduction. Yeah, and unfortunately, you guys can't see Jennifer's face on the, the screen. She's she she like the day sticking has, her finger um, down her throat. Right there. Right there. But no, she's nodding her head up and down. Okay. Um, and I, you know, I've I've worked with development codes either way, and it's very typical that you either see them right up front or at the end. You know, so either either place is um, customary, shall we say? Um, so um, I don't see it as a an issue to uh, the, the the next yep. version, you know, to have that relocated. Uh, and yep. she's nodding yes again. <laughs> yep. What, what, what I was going to say exactly what Karen said. We, to me, that's them, editorial. Yep. We put them sometimes at the beginning, sometimes at the end. So it's it's completely up to you all how you want to organize it. We're we're flexible. Right, and and that's what the the commission can decide on as they elect to bring it forward. The bigger issue in my mind is the, the lack of traceability or ability for us and, and you guys, Larry, to follow what was changed and why, uh, well, even in the definition. It's a fairly major, so it's, a fair, it's a fairly major task to maintain yet another document, which I think to do that would be to maintain a copy of the existing ordinance, or existing, the existing title 67 and 18 with a, legend on each paragraph this is contained in such and such this was omitted this was re renamed something so it appears you'd almost have to do that to explain every one and that's and that's standard procedure as far as i know okay. uh, that's Maybe what that's... we always had to do when we did changes to documentation and stuff like that uh, uh you know and is was kind of thing and i'm sure they've gone through that because they had I a rationale I sort of do that for myself. reformatting yeah. Maybe that's you. Well, and at least as a ref I'm sorry, I'm not sure. at least as a reference for it, it makes it easier to see what's missing because I was sitting there with the definition saying, okay, is this one in here? I literally I, I know I'm anal. I, but but there were ones that were significant that weren't in there. And the stuff that was put at the beginning at the beginning for each of those of 16 and 17 and 18 were were in there because they were specific definitions for how it was used. And it was used that way in the whole code, but there was a reason it was added, defining it, you know, defining the item. And if it's just gone now, it, that's yeah. No, I said the, the summary probably doesn't provide the deep level of detail that one would be looking for to really see if every if if every if every subclause was, was oh, preserved no. or removed or somehow no, else yeah I what I for the definition I wasn't talking about that I, I mean Lou might have I was but I, I would like it uh, to understand um, you should how's that that's not my job but but to understand if it was left out why well here, here's an example well, let's use the definition of a dwelling unit. The dwelling unit is defined both in the zoning code and the subdivision code. So which definition moved forward? And why was that chosen over the other one? And that we're, get to, but we're gonna get that in our line, section by section review. Yeah, I think. And, and, and maybe just a narrative will be good enough, but if we need more documentation, we'll ask for that later. 
narrative meaning Jennifer's That's explanation. Exactly. Okay. exactly. Instead of trying to capture it in some long spreadsheet. Yep. Um, but I, I think for consensus on the, the point on the definitions, you're right, Karen, it could be in the back and it could be in the front, but because our previous three titles had those definitions up front, I, I would prefer they be up front. No, and we can, that, Jennifer's even said that, that's a, an easy enough shift to, to make. So I, I think we can, we can get that there for you. Okay. Um, but for the purposes of the, the review over the next couple of work sessions, they're gonna be in, in, okay. in seven. Oh, <laughs> But, so. but again, I think it's important as we move through the next draft that those things show up as crossouts for now. Okay. Last one is in the definition sections. We have definitions for land use types, as well as names for words and for defining words and terms. I'd like to see those separated that we have land uses in one section of the definitions and in another section dealing with terms. Could you explain? I don't, could you explain? Yeah, the, the reason, reason for that is- No, 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 not explain why. I'm just saying, what did, I, didn't, I didn't understand the recommendation. The recommendation is under the definition sections. We classify each of the definitions as either a land use type, a dwelling, or we define, define it as, or, and then another category for terms and words. For instance, a definition may be a single family residence would be a land use type. And then a definition for a setback would, would, would be a word or to be defined. Just to keep those separate. Why? The, I, I need to know what the advantage is. I've not seen that before. Well, the, the advantage is because if you were looking for a particular land use, well, I guess, again, if it's going to be alphabetical, you'll be able to find it. But I, 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 I actually, I've created codes that did that with the definitions broken up in those two sections. And I thought it was helpful. Okay. Yeah. Um, thinking like the um, average citizen, I don't know that they would make those same distinctions when they were looking through that section, should they not be able to sleep some night and we're contemplating a development project and felt compelled to look at the code book. Um, <laughs> so from, I, I think from that, that average person kind of, of, of perspective, um, making that kind of a distinction is potentially not helpful. So. Last thing I'd like to say is that th there has been an awful lot of work Gone, gone into the proposal that we were given at our last meeting to take, or we picked up. And I just want to acknowledge Karen and Jennifer for, for all the work that you have done so far to get us to this point. That uh, it's, 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 it's very, uh, what was the word? Um, Thorough and thoughtful. Thorough, thoughtful. It's very complete. And uh, you, you, you can just tell that by using the same format over and over that there was a lot of consideration given into trying to make that our code you know, uniform, easy to read, and things like that do that. And I just wanted to say thank you very much. Thank you. That's all I have for now. All right, you guys ready to dive into chapter one here? Any other comments from the commission at this point? Go forward, Jim. That would be Jennifer. Jennifer, <laughs> yes. All right, can you guys see uh, the document that I'm sharing on the screen? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, yes. fantastic. It might be easier if you made it a little bigger. I can I've certainly a, make it bigger. Can everyone read it really well? I've got, as long as we've got the paper copy, here's the problem, but it's, it's, it's dense to read. You tell me, is that is that better? Yes, thank I you. I think it is easier for people. Okay, I understand. I can never read these things when they're projected on a screen either. Um, okay, so with regards to the tracking on the definitions, we can we can um, create a little bit more of flow for that. Uh, so that that's a good good note. But you'll see through the rest of the document, we've 
where we've struck out the um, different sections, that, that's one way that you can kind of track where some of this information came from. So um, this title came from chapter or title 17, um, which was specific to the subdivision regulations. So we've kind of um, change the language to merge it into this unified development code or whatever we want to call it. We, we can still have that discussion. Um, this was the name that, um, that we came up with uh, when we started the project, but you know, some people call them a land use code, some people call it a land use and development code, and some call it a unified development code. Those are the three terms I see the most. So we can um, talk about that a little bit further if we'd like, uh, but I'll just go through kind of this first couple of sections and we can kind of discuss as we go. Um, so is, is there any preference on, on the title? Do, does anyone have a thought? Do we- I have a it? question or a comment. Um, sure. I assume this, the code is gonna, just like, just like title 17 before, which said it was the subdivision regulation of the city, that this unified development code will be further codified into the code of the city as a whole. So we're gonna give it a number 16 or 17 or 18. One of those numbers, those three numbers will all be available. So everything that here starts as 1.01 eventually would become 16.101 or 17.101. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And we can do that at the end, just at the same time we're moving the definitions or, or whatever. We can oh, that. And that was my very first question is we're, we're eliminating or we're consolidating three different titles. So it would fall under a new title 16, I would assume. Um, I think 16 is currently mobile home, 17 is subdivision, 18 right. is it would matter. zoning. Just right, so they'll all disappear. We'll have three vacant numbers. Yeah. Okay. But, um, can I ask a question? It, with what you just said, I thought the whole point of this was this was instead of 16, 17. It is. It is. It is. Yes. But it's still going to be part so of the larger those code. Three, those three titles will disappear. So this. Oh, the numbers will be the there, but there will be no text. Is that what you're telling me? Well, we can call it 16, 17, or 18. No, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure. Yes, I, that's, that's what he's yeah. saying. Thank yeah. you. Okay. I like the, uh, the name Unified Development Code. As a standalone code and take it out of the existing code? No, 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 no. I don't mind the title. I just think it's part of our existing code, number no, code. Just like title, it title five called the business code or something else. I mean, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's customary. Yeah. Well, Jennifer just said, you know, we could call it a unified development code. We call it land development code. We call it something else. Oh, and, it, it, and over question. This? That was an outstanding question. Yeah, unified yeah. development code's fine. It's just, it will be numbered. Yeah. within the yes. aggregate code. Understood. I'm okay with that first 101. <laughs> one dot zero one. Go on, Jennifer. Okay, sounds good. Uh, the purpose, um, we like to, at the beginning of all of our codes have some sort of purpose statement. This was again, a blend um, a little bit. It came from title 17 and we've brought in some language to make it fit better with a unified development code so it wasn't um, just subdivision specific. So um, as you can see, we've, we've brought in some new language here at the front end. All the blacking language, uh, as you've probably figured out, is existing and um, just brought in a couple of new, new, um, new pieces to bring in the, the zoning piece. So any, any questions on any of this? I have one. Yeah. Um, you've identified Envision Woodland Park 2030. Should we not make that specific reference and just say that this is a, uh, a mission of the adopted community master plan? Because hopefully this will last beyond 2030's projection. Um, yep. I think that's fine. We do that in a lot of communities um, where we've actually taken out the specific title. So I think that would be fine. Just my suggestion, I don't know if the rest of the commission or anyone else has any feelings about that. Well, when I saw it, I thought, you know, it's a really good plan, but it won't be the only one. I was, that's the one thing I noticed too, Carol. Yeah, get rid of Thank 2030. Do we want to call it a comprehensive plan because we define that? Yeah, we call it, we, we refer to ours and it may just be, be because we're unique. We call it the comprehensive plan and not the master plan. That was gonna be my next question. 
great. It'd be helpful to be able to see these changes as we make them. I, I can make them in real time if we if we are all in agreement on these items. I am. Sure. Go for yeah. it, Jennifer. Yeah. All right. Trollos. Don't mind my spelling errors as I go. <laughs> oh, this is great. Thanks. I would also put City of Willow Park comprehensive plan. Yeah, instead of community, call it the City of Woodland Park Comprehensive Plan. Yep. Okay. Any other comments on purpose? I have a comment on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't help myself. Under C, we have a list there of. Uh, this uh, unified development plan is designed. C says to establish a variety of zoning district classifications according to the use of land and buildings with varying densities and uses and standards whose interrelationships inter of boundary zones. I, I, what is a boundary zone? What is the whole sentence? <laughs> I, I'm sorry, it makes no sense to me. It's got a really high fog index. I'm going to read it here for myself so I can answer you appropriately. Just a second. Yeah, that is a little wordy. Um, I really think it's it's more about the first part to establish a variety of zone district classifications according to the use of land and buildings with varying intensities of uses and standards. And I think we could stop there. I agree. Yep. Mm -hmm. Does everyone agree with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's, let's okay. Yeah. K K combines several before. I would I would restore the separation of paragraphs. So so K reads to establish reasonable standards of design and procedures, subdivisions and resubdivisions in order they provide an orderly layout and use of land. L to ensure the public facility are available and have sufficient capacity to serve, et cetera. It's rather, it seems like it was trying too hard to get them to group them together. So I would keep the separation there. It was originally in case in, in chapter 17. Instead of adding the end. So, so mm -hmm. after the you layout and use of the land, semicolon, new line fee, carriage return, L to ensure. Just like it was in seventeen to start. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, this is not unique. This is across the board in, you know, the whole document. That that it is just too wordy and too unintelligible. I can't believe that Logan Simpson reviewed this in house before handing it over the wall. Uh, looking at some of the errors that are in here, mechanical errors, things like that. Uh, when I was a consultant, I would have been ashamed. I would not have been allowed to deliver this, even as a first draft, to a customer. And I want to just say that because we're going to hear the same comment in a number of places, not just in definitions. But we're trying to simplify things so people can understand them. And And... There's too much wordiness. We went through this, uh, I know, when we were developing our rules and procedures, uh, trying to dumb it down. I don't want to say dumb it down, oh, but simplify okay. it and make it so that, that even old guys like me could understand it, as well as the new people that haven't been exposed to some of this. And, and I'm just really disappointed in, in what we've got here to review as a first first thing, we're putting a lot of work on the commission's plate to try to straighten it out. And I appreciate what they're gonna to have to do. My pontificating, thank you. So no, I'm looking at a completely different page of my pivot page here for when it looks at uh, what is now 
M. Uh, M. Where's M? Previously yeah. L. Previously L. Oh, thank you. Okay. Coming M with I, Mr. Brown's uh, recommended faster. changes. Oh, I see what we're doing. Okay. That's the danger of making changes on the fly right. is that potentially adjust numbering after that. But um, um, there's already some problems with that elsewhere in the document, by the way. Yeah, it doesn't well, surprise the me. The section numbers have gotten, gotten off. Yeah. I, that, but go back to the first page. I, your concern, Larry, on C, the part that was added to D, it's that's new. It. I don't understand the purpose of it. Maybe it's just that there's too many words or it needs to be two sentences or something, but I don't understand the purpose of the added two lines. I would strike them. Well, well I, I made some suggestions on how we can modify D to make it understandable. Okay. Hopefully. And that is uh, we add numbers through each of those phrases within that section. So we'd add a phrase in the second line where it says to prevent one, overcrowding on the land. Oh, well, let me let me explain. Then two, undue congestion of population and traffic. Three, poor quality development. Four, waste and inefficient land use. And five, any other use or development that might be detrimental to the stability and livability of the city. The commas, the ands kind of confused and ran things together, but I think by putting numbers there, we can kind of sort those out. That's a good idea. I, I don't know that Jen has to do that in real time, but. Well, the other question before you start making edits, Jen, was um, sometimes in a longer list of things like that, where you've got multiple things that belong in one clause, uh, would be to use the semicolon between the provisions. Um, you know, within that same sentence. And, I understand your thought process, but it's the same thing with when you just sub, sub, separate them by semicolons, it's just a really, really long single sentence. And you really do lose it. I mean, I said, I read it out loud to myself. <laughs> I was having a heck of a time. Well, I think by adding numbers there. The numbers help a lot. Especially I think the numbers help. This way I on, agree. on the fly, then we start losing our format again. Yeah, I can see that on the screen. <clears throat> yeah, I wouldn't do them on the fly. It's going to take up too much time, right. but are there going to be other areas in the code where we've got those types of laundry lists that need to be broken down by subparagraphs, numbered subparagraphs? Potentially, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, if we're trying to shorten things, you get rid of B, right for the growth of the city in accordance with the comprehensive plan and other plans. The, the whole the whole paragraph is started by saying this is designed to implement the community master plan, the comprehensive plan. Yeah. So just get rid of B. Yes, is I agree. That, okay. I agree with that. It's repetitive. But for the sake of brevity of the meeting, should we just ask that a review be done of the document to break down those paragraphs that have those long lists of attributes by subparagraph or an indentation on the paragraph? Yeah, and you guys can identify them too, just like you did here. Um, I don't have to, I'm making notes off to the side as well, detailed notes, so we know which section and item needs to be addressed. Okay. Any concerns with that first page? Um, no, on the second page. Okay. On uh, the second page, um, page two, then. I'm sorry. No. Um, Subparagraph I. Yeah, Jen, did you get deletion of B? Look like you didn't. Yeah, I've I've typed it up in my notes. I didn't want to mess up the okay, formatting gotcha. again. <laughs> well, and I, um, and this may be true throughout the document. I, I it just caught my attention a couple of times. Um, we talk about develop spaces in a manner that protects the town's existing development context. I, I would 
ask that you use the word city. We do not refer to ourselves as a town. We are a city. You're correct, but it's interesting. City is a defined term in the document. Is it? It's defined in the original, it was defined originally in our code is referred to the city council. So actually when we get, so just keep it in mind, when you get okay. there, you're gonna to wanna to say it refers to the actual municipality or the city council as the case may be. Because mm -hmm. it can be, it's used in both contexts. And we can fix so, those definitions too. I mean, it, it's, it's okay if you fix, if you broaden the definition, and we're, but it's certainly not yeah. a town. Yeah. Carol's absolutely. Absolutely. We've, 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 sure I've made think. myself a note to do a global search and replace on that. Yeah. <laughs> that I'm not sure I understand, eight, I mean, why H and, H and I were added. They're new, they're brand new, they were never in mm -hmm. anything else. I could sleep at night without them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, if we're going for the lowest bag. common denominator, like, uh, what, you know, what are are we not addressing those in the the preceding paragraphs? I would encourage you to keep I. Um, since this is a purpose statement, it's just kind of laying out the foundation for what you're going to find within the code and kind of the overall purpose of the code. I would say H is is neither here nor there, um, but I really does speak to uh, any infill and redevelopment protecting the city's existing development context. I think that's kind of important to have in there. And I understand you don't want a, a lot of additional words. I get that. We'll try to pare things down where we can, but that's one that I might consider keeping. what I tried to do and then my attention span was challenged um, was to take each of those sub paragraphs and determine if we address them by topic in the the rest of the document um, and for that reason I thought that's why you spelled them out in the purpose each of those sub paragraphs should correspond to something else in this new code uh, and if they did not, then they're superfluous. I, I agree. I think we ought to keep eye. Uh, and I agree with, with Carol changing towns to cities. Mm -hmm. and, and then I agree with <laughs> Lee that I did catch that earlier too, because I always thought when we referred to the city, we were talking about the, the corporate city, mm -hmm. not the council, not the planning commission. Not staff, but the city as a whole. Yeah. So we need to take a careful look at that when we come to that definition. And I would change the word uh, existing development context to character. I think that explains a little bit more what we're trying to accomplish in encouraging it re infill. Where's that? I. Oh, on infill. Okay. Yeah. Encourage the. And then would you need to define character? That's been something that's been talked about a lot lately. So yeah. Yeah. I would be careful with that because that's hard to define and probably is up to the judgment of the individual person. Do you think it'd be better to just keep it as context? I don't know. I'm going to leave that with you. Okay. <laughs> just a comment. <laughs> the, the difficulty with existing development context is a phrase. And Jen, you might have another way to say that, but it's it's very uh, ambiguous. I think those words are, are ambiguous, but that's me. Okay, I'll put some thought into that and see if we can um, come up with a word that would be a little bit more um, less ambiguous, less ambiguous, and still get to the point of what we're trying to say there. Going going back to K. And we just modified a second ago. I, I recognize that came out of the subdivision code because we're talking about subdivision, but I think we're also what we need to do is talk about all development projects yeah. to establish the reasonable standards of design and procedures for all development projects, subdivisions, and resubdivisions. Because again, we're talking about a unified development code. Let's don't be exclusive in our purpose. Would you prefer if that was stated for 
for all development, including maybe it just needs to say for all development and not even say subdivisions and resubdivisions. That would work. That's my suggestion. Okay. And it goes, and that's true when it goes down a little further in that section. When we talk about to serve the proposed subdivision, so cross off subdivision, put project. Projects or develop or a development. And I'm okay going back to I there, Jean, keeping it as context instead of uh, character. Any other comments on this section of purpose? Anything else on page two? I'd like to ask that we reinsert a new section between the purpose and authority called policy. If you look at the subdivision code, there's a policy statement dealing with the review of subdivisions. That policy, all through, th I could read them to you, they're, they're very good uh, policies, but these policies really articulate what, what we're trying to do with the uniform uniform development code. And you don't think they were captured in the purpose? No, okay. no, I, I think they really get to some of the very important things. Where are you? I'm sorry. Here I can, I have it up. 17.04.020 of the existing code. Right, but we, with the proposed code between the purpose section and the authority, Add a new section called yeah. policy. Yeah, if, if you take a look, I think that appears in 5.0101 of the new chapter five. Is that one of those mom and apple pie things? So that should be up front? Well, except it's up front of the subdivision parts, which is chapter five. Yeah. Okay. Well, again, I think it ought to be. So it wasn't lost. It was put in the beginning of the subdivision, which well, seems sensible to me. I, I think it's more than just subdivisions. I think it's all projects. Except that, except that it is agreed that they're all subdivisions. It's declared policy of the city to consider the subdivision of land. It's a, next one, land shall be subdivided. C, the existing approach public improvement shall conform to and be properly related to the proposal shown in the comprehensive plan. I mean, it sounds subdivision-like. I, I, I took that policy and I added the word uses of projects or as appropriate and so subdivisions. Well, I guess it goes back to is that policy, those, those generic policy considerations true for every land use that we're going to describe and not just for subdivisions. That's, that that's was the case, we should rewrite them so we don't. It's, well, yeah. It started to say it is declared to be the policy of the city to consider the subdivision land and the subsequent development. You know, yeah. So we need to rewrite it if it's going to be general. Exactly. Yeah, so then take this out completely and have it nowhere else to move it forward. Move it forward. Yeah, under, section five. under the purpose. Yep. And I did that, Lee. I went through the subdivision policy. And I wrote the fit over here. I, I could certainly read those changes. If you, if you want, want to move it in, then as a new 1.03, it's modified some. Okay. Generalized. Okay. Well, as long as we don't get too much, we're starting out with two or three pages of dense text and policy and objectives and stuff that, that that people's eyes are going to glaze over before they get there. <laughs> that, that's a good point because as we go through this, we're looking at these provisions kind of at an individual unit and not how they relate to each other thing in the code. So as we go through other changes in the code, it may require us to go back and make some other changes that we've already reviewed. 
never count on the first time of being right. You know that, Larry. I don't. <laughs> so the bottom line is to delete it from the first page of chapter five, uh, rephrase it to apply to all land use and put it into chapter one exactly. between uh, purpose and is authority. That, is that everyone agree? I, I, you know, I, you can't, it's, I'm okay, but I wouldn't prefer it that way. Do you have a, is that the same reaction elsewhere? Well, I mean, is it is it just in chapter five or is it in the other sections as well? No, it's it's, it's the text that the text is a policy statement near the beginning of, of our existing chapter 17 okay. that was put in near the beginning of chapter five on subdivisions. But, so. but Larry's saying that he wants to tweak it a little bit so that it covers everything, correct? And, and that's just what Carol said a few minutes ago. She said much better than I could. I what I said. We're talking about all projects instead of just some. Okay. Unless unless it has bearing on subdivisions, but or on chapter five, but I I, I don't think it does. I think it could apply to no. every consideration of land use. So then I think you'd have to look at is the goal to just give you all the general provisions in chapter one, and then we get into the weeds for the others mm -hmm. as we go, mm -hmm. because I, I agree. I think we're going to lose people. No one's going to read chapter, gonna read one. chapter one. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite chapter. <laughs> chapter five and I was just going to say, one and see what it says. people are going to grab two and keep going. <laughs> uh, and then, so, and then Karen will be like, well, in chapter one that you didn't read. <laughs> it's a reference tool, right? Yes. Right. Right. Um, I'd support moving it up to chapter one. Yeah, yeah it sounds like a consensus thing. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. With some with the appropriate edits. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And I had a general com a comment on one point oh four. Yep. And A says A says building new buildings are in accordance with this this code. B says new lots are in accordance with this code. C says I thought it should say all proposed uses shall conform to the development code. Actually, it talks about all structures and uses of land to be authorized by the permit or approval, which permit or approval. I think it works better if it just says all proposed uses shall conform to this development code, regular, et cetera, et cetera. And then, then it makes sense. Buildings, lots, uses, the three things that okay. compliance. Does that make sense to you, Jen? Yes, it does. All right. Okay. You know, 1.04 compliance is also repeated again further in this section. Right. Under 1.0602. Very good. It's Thank got you, one oh, it's A and B and C are repeated. Yep. So there's two compliance sections there. Yeah, I think we can lose the second one. Yeah, we'll we'll lose that second one. And I don't understand, not, Jen, yours is all one color, but on this one, somebody, whoever read it second, it's purple, said, um, added the, put in, uh, alt in the second line, altered for use or any land use proposed to be changed. There's a proposed to there and there's a proposed to in the first line. So I, there's something weird about it. Okay. You can just check it out. In 1.05, I think it's probably just the adoption, the final adoption by the city. I don't think there's a difference. Okay. Can you restate what you just said, 1.05? 1.05, delete the word final before adoption. Got it. And I don't understand if you're, you're continuing to go here, uh, 1.0601. Why does it say that the uh, UDC is there are the minimum requirements? I mean, That's really typical language because minimum. this is, um, it's like a building code is a minimum set of standards that structures get built to. So when a developer tells you that, oh, well, you know, I'm gonna build it to code or I'm gonna meet the code, your reply should be, thank God, because that's like the baseline minimum level. I, of what I, I don't have any problem with that at all, <laughs> except 
in this sentence, we're not talking about that. It says minimum requires adopted for the promotion of public health, safety, and welfare. I, I, it's like a motherhood statement. I don't, I, it's not a minimum require on, you have to use this type of lumber or you have to withstand this wind thing or whatever. Well, if we had one iota less strict strictness in this, then it wouldn't be adequate for the health and safety. Well, I, I'm just, I'm just saying, I don't, I don't, and I'm not sure what that, it, it doesn't seem like it's necessary, but that's me. I'm, I'm actually okay with the minimum because it just, it sets a standard that this is where we're starting. Exactly. We can layer in, there may be more things that are going as we come along, or something might be a little more structured or maybe harsher because something was done, but this is the bare minimum that's happening. And, but but is it the bare you, but it's the bare minimum from the sentence for public health, safety, and welfare? I, I mean, it, it's like that's why I say it's motherhood. It starts when you say that they're applicable to all land, building structures, and uses. Cool, but the, the it's like those three things kind of like shortchanging health and safety. Kind of well, the whole basis for codes is public health, it's welfare, public and health safety. Yeah. And welfare. So okay. that's the whole reason we have codes is to promote those three items. Oh, okay. That's the underlying purpose for all of them. Mm -hmm. Sounds like apple pie to me. Mm -hmm. okay. Apple pie without ice cream. Exactly. <laughs> no rum. <laughs> <laughs> Clean. Yes, yes. I got a question. On, are we are we jumped over to 106 or 106? I think we we're just there. talking about 106. Yeah, okay. we're now. B. I knew someone was going to ask. <laughs> All land located within three miles of corporate limits of the city and not located in any other municipality for the purpose of control with reference to the street element of the comprehensive plan. How is that accomplished now? I think it's four miles, not three. Yeah, it's, uh, statutory is three miles. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, which is why when you do the comprehensive plan, uh, you typically look at that three mile planning area outside city limits. That's that's the threshold spelled out in the state statute. How do we know if the uh, streets that are proposed within that three mile area are conforming with the comp plan? Um, ideally, that would have been addressed through the comp plan process when you guys looked at that three mile area. Um, and then, then this, and it's really triggers or ties back to when somebody's doing an annexation. Um, that the annex, one of the, I don't do it, I'm rusty on this. It's been a while. I'm, uh, I think one of the provisions that uh, I forget exactly at what stage in the annexation process, but you're making a finding to um, back to the comp plan that this is supported, and it goes to that three mile area mm -hmm. outside the, the city limits um, because that's all that you can really look at annexing is within that three three mile area in any given year. If I'm, I'm, I'm really rusty. This on is that also aspect. this is also not new. This is old. Yeah, yeah it's not new language. Yeah. So you don't want to tinker with yeah. it unless you got a really good analysis. To Let it go. Yeah, it'd be yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. You're right, though. I don't know how in the world you enforce that. But... Okay. Well, just as as a side, you know, the next section talks about annexation a little bit. But again, I was very much aware of the three mile plan in our comp plan. And, you know, if, if there's a subdivision proposed in the county within that area, are we notified by the county that uh, we have a subdivision within the three mile area and we need to look at the streets? I have not seen an application come through in my short tenure here. So um, I'm not entirely sure the degree of uh, cooperation and discussion that may exist between the county and the city. Okay. Uh, I, ju I just can't answer that, Larry. Okay. It's not really a question like, I'm, I'm not asking you to change it. I'm just saying, how, how is that implemented and accomplished today? Let's let, let's let it be. Let's, I guess we're page four, relationship to other ordinances. Relationship to comprehensive plan. Again, we're going to, we don't have a date there, but I was going to put down uh, the adopted with the park comp plan is good. We also need to change that, that line that says the adopted 
Woodland Park Conference Plan is the official policy document of the city. Well, I think we have other policy documents that are in place. Yeah. We have a strategic a plan. Yeah. So this, this would be the official land development policy document. I can tell you, you will have members on council that will challenge that sure. language yes. as the comp plan being the official policy document. Yeah. Well, they find it to be an aspirational document is, is and they would not item. like that language at all. That, that's what I was gonna say. It makes an excellent point. Is 1.08 critical to this document? I'm asking because I think the answer is I think it's not critical. No, we've already referenced mm -hmm. the comprehensive plan as the uh, directive for this code. So I, I that I'd be about and some of this is a purported statement of fact. The code supports the objectives established in the comprehensive plan. Well, it does or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've already said it yeah. does. Yeah, exactly. So, so you're going to strike 108. I would do. I would delete 108. Yeah, I'm okay with that. What? And I'll, I'll throw this one back to Jen, and I, I know I'm, I'm being weird, but the 107, it's another one of those things that I, I think you sh if you read it out loud and, and try to understand it, it's, it's a little confusing. I think it's. Okay, we can, we, I'll take a look at rewording 107 and we can, I think you guys have a good point. We've referenced the comprehensive plan at the beginning. Um, some communities like to have this in here, but I, I do understand the sensitivities with the comprehensive plan in Woodland Park, and I think it's fine to eliminate 108. Three. Good. I think on 109. Yes, but it's been in there. Well, on C, my problem with, with C is it was taken from 1803.01. But if you read this sentence, I, I, I think I don't understand it because they say the regulation is not, a, not an, uh, intended to abrogate or annul any permits easements, da 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 da, da provide, be issued before the effective date of the regulations. And it says, provided, however, that where the, this code imposes greater restriction, you read along, then um, the provisions of this code shall govern. So, okay, you're saying that it's not supposed to affect anything that was already in effect, but then you're saying it can. At least that's the way I read it. So I don't understand. Any comment, Jennifer? Yeah, no, I, I agree with that statement because it is, it's, it doesn't change anything that's in place currently. Um, it's meant to apply to new development or um, you'll, you'll see later in the code there, you know, um, additions or amendments to developments to a certain degree. So I, I agree. I think we could take that out. Take out all the blue? Yeah. Okay. I'll let them see. Yeah. But that was just primarily pulled over from an existing. Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I agree. I, I saw it, but I just didn't understand it when I read it there either. So. Okay. Where do we get slaughtering this code? That'll be really easy to understand. <laughs> Anything else on page five? Yes. On, uh... 1.10.02 violations continue. The first line says in violation of previous unif unified development code. Well, we don't have any previous unified development code. We have a zoning code, subdivision code, a mobile home code. We could, we could restate that to say any violation of the previous zoning subdivision zoning subdivision mobile and mobile home, home titles yep. yep but and then the second part of that sentence says will be a violation under this land use code are we going to be consistent and call it yes uh the unified development code. unified development code yep. no actually it's, oh, okay. it's not actually it's, it's meant to say any violation of the previous the previous applicable code shall continue to be a violation under that previous applicable code 
I oh, think is what it's trying no, to say. It's no, it's trying to make a transfer between the two. So yeah. then it, it shall continue to be a violation. It it shall all that wouldn't continue. It shall also be a violation under the new code. Is that what? The, my, my comment on this was I wanted our legal counsel to review it and see how she thinks this needs needs to be written to make it clear that if there's a problem that she can act to enforce it under the okay. new code when it was really a problem under the old code. Okay. Uh, violations under the old code are not acceptable under the, are not grandfathered in. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. I mean, not I'm, 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 unless we write it in a way that's a little looser than it was in the previous one, yeah. then it might be. Is that a consideration we'd have to make if we'd have to grandfather somebody in? Is that well, the, somewhere we want to go? If, <laughs> if they're saying they're in violation previous to adopting this code, they still have to fix their problems. Right. They're still in violation. Right. They're still in they're violation. Still yeah, is there a more straightforward way of saying that? Yeah. You could just say any violation that um, maybe well, that word is a existing violation. Jennifer, yeah, any, I, any I, violation I, existing as of the effective date of this code would continue to be a violation? No, well, and I yeah, it's, 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 you be careful. It's not, it doesn't be a violation of this code because it was a violation of the old code. Presumably you have to look, it's only a violation under the new code. If you look at the new code and it is a violation. Then the question change? is, is is the violation of the old code still enforceable under the old code? But could you say could still be considered a violation of? Maybe, but that's why I said let yeah. our city attorney decide what, what she needs to be able to enforce. Yeah, what I, what I did, Jennifer, and um, my thought is we just flag it for rewording and consultation yep. with um, a legal counsel. I'm making note of that right now. Thank you, Karen. Keep in mind that this is in a, a, a section of the code called transition from prior regulations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've never seen that before in, in the code. And I think that's a very good idea, but it's got to be carefully written. Mm -hmm. for, we can all understand it. In the previous, in 10.01, another example, we have duly adopted laws and regulations. I think it's better just say laws and regulations. <laughs> well, hopefully, or then you get into a further question: Was it adopted correctly, or is it duly, fully, duly adopted? I mean, it's just. Yeah, I like that. In ten, next page one ten point oh three references to nonconformities refers to six twenty seven. As it's currently written, it's actually 625, but the numbering, the numbering of section six is all messed up. So it just yeah, I yeah, yeah I know there was yeah. no six two seven that I could find. So yeah, right. and there I saw two five, but who knows? It just needs to be consistent. I, I read that and I thought, well, don't we have a non-conforming section dealing with non-conforming uses and structures? But then again, we're back here over the transition. But, but you do, but it was numbered 6.25. I understand. We'll get there. Well, that takes us through uh, section one. I do have one. <laughs> I have one question for you all. Oftentimes, yeah. and, and this might be a little bit of a legal question to throw to legal counsel, but a lot of times we'll also add a severability clause in the general provisions that just states that this was a, this, was, it, there was a severability clause added, is that true? I don't remember seeing one in here. Yes, yes, it is. Um 1.09 E on page near the top of page yeah. 15. Oh, good. Okay. I apologize. Yes, we're good. Sometimes I put it as a separate item. So if you guys want it as a separate title so it's clear we can do that or we can just leave it in here it seems it's in a good place uh, flag okay. that for um uh, our legal list um because um there may be wisdom to having it clearly labeled as a severability clause so the whole point is to be able to find it easily yes <laughs> yes Call, in the exception called interpretation is a logical place to look. <laughs> Not to be opened to. 
So we're ready to move on to chapter two, zoning districts. Sure. Jennifer, any... Uh... All right, I'm gonna stop sharing and then reshare. Get this new document up. Oh. All right, can you all see that okay? I'll try to make it nice and big. That's pretty good. Okay. So on the front end of this, it's just a matter of adding um, text to be clear what each of these zone districts were. I think your current um, your current code just has SR and then single family residential. So we um, incorporated the, the official names of each zone district. So if we're, if we're looking at the official name of each of the districts, we don't need additional information saying single family residential with lot size equivalent to it, when we're talking about a title of the district, because those those provisions are already included under each of those sections in our proposed code, so we don't need to clarify those things any further. Let's just keep it very simple. Keep it just the title of the district. I agree with that. If you guys all agree, I don't understand what you said. Sorry, just slow. Are, are, you're proposing just to list the, the just to list the names without the words without any yeah. definition behind um, it. Look at the screen and see the part that she has highlighted right. in gray. Right. That's We're what talking I just said. about deleting that from every one of these. So it literally is just a list of the names of those. It would just districts. be what the red is and not any of the black. Right. Except the problem you're going to have if you if you just have those in there is uses isn't in this section at all. It's it's in another place. Um, and when you go into the table, which I love your table, I, I'm a table person, it's, it's much easier. You have all the dimensional st standards in there by SR, UR, whatever. And that's great. And then you go into the, the next sections and you, you, you repeat. I mean, they're wonderful tables, but then you still have them, you still have them in the section 2.03 se sections, and et cetera, which set gives the standards again. So you, I don't think if you have the table, you need to have both. But the problem, what I see the problem is if you don't have the definitions, the use table isn't up in this section. I, I follow that too. And my, my take on it was, as Larry said, get rid of the text up front and immediately follow it with the descriptions yes. and then put the table at the very end because the table kind of like summarizes what you've just read. The, the table that immediately, yeah, yeah, yeah the uh, dimensional The standard dimensional table. table. Yeah. And then make should, that fall behind should, the... Should the table have some preface to it saying, yeah. intended to a summary, but it's the, the, the foregoing is, are effective here for convenience here is a summary of those requirements. And, yeah, and then rather it, writing them two places and not having them write some time or some amendment not picking up. Oh, yeah, that's the, yeah, because they are they are in both places right now. So but I have, the, a, I have a proposal for you guys. Can I can I jump in? Sure. Um, I think I think the tables read a lot better than the text. So where we have 15,000 square feet and some of these dimensions in the description, I think we could simplify these descriptions down to one sentence or so that just says this is the intent of this zone district and then have the rest of the information in the table. And then the other thing I might suggest is where we have residential zone districts here. I, I like what you guys were saying at having the descriptions first and then have the table that's associated just with residential districts at the end of that. And then when we go down further to commercial districts, oh, I see you have it all listed out here. Um, I think I think this this chapter is one that could use a little bit more work to combine some of this. But I did we didn't want to touch it too much yet until we had your feedback. So um, I, I can tell you as a recent user for reasons you probably understand of these this chapter or the old one is it was difficult for me to find the definition of these zoning districts. It goes immediately into the table. 
and has lots of information about permitted uses, et cetera. But I never understood what the definition of that zone really was in a sentence. Or, uh, I would find this to be helpful as a lay user, if you will. Um, just from that point of view, I like what I see here because when I start looking in the chapter, I know what I'm looking at and I know what I'm looking for. So just some input at, from a lay person. What, what I see here is the standards that are putting in here as part of the definition or the sure. title of the district. And there are places to find that. And I, if, I, if we're going to eliminate the text, I would like a reference to the specific section. So suburban residential, see section 2.03. That way you could go back and see what's included in that section. That would be helpful. If the uh, definition is not included on the front page. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Because well, when you get really that. close to it, you find that it's easy to use. But when someone that doesn't look at it all the time looks at it and is looking for, I mean, and I'll say during this STR process, I've been looking at this quite closely and I found it difficult for me to understand what that zoning district was and what it meant. If you follow me, because uh, the tables give a great deal of information, but the, the UR or the SR is there, but I didn't, you know, I'm not close enough to it. Well, and, and within our current regulations, I will say that the um, not so much the, the word I would typically use is intent of the zoning district as opposed to definition of the zoning. Yeah. So the intent of the zoning districts um, really isn't, it, it could use some work in our, our current regulations. And then when we transfer it into this and, and try to restructure it, um, mm -hmm. that's, that's part of what um, council member case is reacting to is that that intent is lacking to start mm -hmm. with. And then it, you may not recall because it preceded you by a year or so, but there was the multifamily. It said the intent was to have attached dwellings. And the conclusion was that didn't really mean what it said because that was just an intent. Well, and the other the other part I wish that I was. see with this one <laughs> is because you have zoning districts established and then you know with these the one liner things and the the text repeat, repeating the dimensions, but you don't get to this to a table of allowed uses until back in section four. So it gets a little more complicated at some yeah. level. No, and I'm actually comfortable with the uses being split out from the, the zone districts. And the reason is um, this really defines, you know, what is the district? And then what are some of those baseline dimensional standards associated with the districts? Um, so lot size, setbacks, building height, accessory building height. This is where those numeric kind of things get spelled out. And then it's in the use section where we dive into what uses go in the various zones and then the other, um, if I remember right, supplemental standards that go. Yeah, there, there's, you, you have the tables in section four for that stuff. But in this section itself, after all this other stuff, you have the definition, you know, the purposes, and it's a paragraph. It's not a one-liner. Yeah. Okay, so that if there's more of a description of what that is. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's not the complicated table that says, yes, you can have a daycare or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's the, the words over here, rather than not have them at all on the front, why not? have some of that right up front there before they get to those numbers. Because, because this section is called designated. It, the city is divided into the following districts. Correct. Just let it and turn to 2.03, residential yeah. zone districts. And then what Ken just said a few minutes ago about after that, you can say, refer to section whatever. You know, you know on, on, and I, agreed with you when you first made the proposal that we get rid of that test text, but after Kelly explained, you know, for the layman, which I am, the lay person, lay woman, whatever the hell I am, <laughs> um, having those very brief descriptions up front consolidated, which is something that we did not have in the previous code, at least that it was accessible or, or easily found, I think those are important. But I will go back to, okay, you, you've got that first section designated. 
A through M. And then I would go straight to the definitions. And then still, I would put that usage table, dimensional standard table at the very end of the chapter. Again, just for flow. Okay. Is, is the intent to leave in the questions. discussion um, things like what appears in each one, 203, permitted uses? There's a similar for each zoning district where it says base, it's a cross reference to the table of uses. Is that going to disappear? Is, no, I don't think say so. Each, each, each zone okay. starts with a purpose, and the next sentence is, and the next section is called permitted uses, which doesn't tell you what the use is. It tells you to go look at a table to find the uses. So it, it does reference it. it. It sends you over to four. Yeah. For yeah, I'm not sure that's the smoothest way to do it, but a reference is there. If we're going to take it out, we should be the point you're making. It becomes it would more be of an easier issue. than having for the for the casual but reader to, to have it somewhere. I, I do have a, a broader suggestion relates to exactly this one. These are each one is called permitted uses, and it then says the table of cross out permitted and says allowed uses. The use of allowed is interesting. It might be something we'd like to keep in mind when we get later in the document to conditional use permit and uses conditionally permitted or something. Maybe allowable use might be a useful term that'll avoid this problem because we got to fix that fix that definition. Yeah, I, I was wondering about that permitted versus allowed. Well, that's got to go. But yeah, it's just it's... wrong. But uh, it's just confusing. But is allowable? a term that we might want to adopt here. It's whoever drafted this adopted it already. They crossed out permitted and wrote allow, allowed each, in each for each zone. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. see that on page seven, y'all are. Because you're right, permit yeah. kind of takes, exactly. it's page seven, on page nine, it keeps yeah. doing all yeah. those. So yeah. I just, just to, in drafting this is adopting the word allowed. Is that going to help us fix that problem with these? Two confusing definitions. The question is: Is that a lawyer well, question? Quite possibly. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Well, let's go back to uh, page one of the section. We we're talking about whether the brief definition should be included, and I agree with Miss Case that for the layperson, it's a useful thing. And I, I'd still like a reference to the more specific codes but don't sections it, on that. But don't include standards like one unit per acre or whatever. Participate basically say what is the intent of the suburban residential district? Okay. Single family homes. So you're just looking for the basic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, I'm not getting into the one. And I think that would answer yeah. Kelly's question about if I were if I was reading this, I would say, oh, suburban residentials for single family detached homes. Well, I, I I would disagree with that because there is a distinction between suburban residential and urban residential, and it is lot size. So I, I, I think these very brief definitions are useful. At least and you know that does define what the difference between suburban. Yeah, and you don't see is. it for every one of them. That's the only one that kind of has, and, and then the PUD. Um, I, I, I think and those, again, are, those are those are existing currently. And all we're doing is changing the title of each sentence. They're useful for, for me because I, I know I've had that question before and to have one place I could go and go, oh yeah, that lot size is really the difference. They're both single family, sure. But it's the lot size that makes the distinction. I, that's a good idea. It's a good point. And I think maybe just, if we, if we had a description for every zone, every district. Mm -hmm. Okay. Th th then we could do that and then we can make a distinction between a suburban residential and an urban residential at that point. What is the thinking about what goes in the, the write-up on each district then? Do we need a fuller definition? Do we keep it? And then do we keep other items or do we just cross-reference to something? Because each one has a purpose, a permitted use, a conditional use, then and a height and a setback. Now one has cluster development appears in, in the single family residential and such. So I mean, there's some difference in the two. Do, uh, how are we gonna, you know, how much text do we want in each section? I, I how much that, do we want I, it by just cross-reference? I think this is a rework, the section. The, which they've already agreed to. 
Yeah, they had already agreed to that. So um, if nothing else, this um, discussion is um, giving you all um, great, it, no, it is, it's giving us all great insight into the, the challenges of reworking and combining several chapters and really highlighting uh, some of the things that don't function great, you know, at a staff level. And when we're trying to explain something to, to somebody and where is it written and um, the fact that um, you, you can have these incredibly conflicting provisions from one section to, to another and it's, it, 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 it is very challenging to, to work with this particular regulation. So um, trying to um, get this cleaned up and streamlined, you know, definitely was not going to be an easy task. So this is, this is clearly insight into the, the monumental lift that even restructuring what we have, um, what, what that, that, that is, it's just a, it's a one, very challenging project. Well, one reason that I'm not certain that the idea of getting rid of all the, most of the text was cross-referenced is it's gonna be a little bit unbalanced because the text for mobile home parks goes eight or 10 pages and such. So we're gonna have like, you know, we're gonna have many pages for mobile home park and we're gonna have a half a page for single family. And I, I just, you yeah, can cut so it down, well, but, but you know. I think on the, on the first page here, the definitions, I, I think we should keep those. I, I think we should get reference to the specific sections and describe them more fully. Right. Mm -hmm. So basically the text here is good. I'd add those references to the other more specific detailed sections. Maybe a description of neighborhood commercial and service yes. commercial. Yeah, yes. we, we can expand if we're missing a few. Brief description is a good way to put it. Yeah. But I think, you know, like one sentence, basically what we've got here, and that way we define what mm -hmm. the, the, the zonings are, gives the lay person, let's say, a quick description of what's what, what's different from one to the next. And then for more detailed information, we go to the specific sections. Exactly. And if it takes five pages to define what a mobile home park is, great. If it takes one to define what a you know central business structure is, it doesn't matter. We can then have longer the explanations yeah. in the different sections as needed. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and you need the you need the dis in the extended version, the text versions of <clears throat> like even suburban, suburban residential, it gives the reference to the ordinance numbers. You kind of have to keep those. So you do need the text, even though there's, there's the cliff notes table for all the numbers, which is very handy. Move the table to the end. Or <clears throat> right after the brief description. Um, but honestly, in my usage of them, it's easier to go to the table you got this you go to the table and find out what it is then you can go to the yeah. more detailed description to find out whether i can have my dog house three feet from this side yard or, or not i think it's four feet the difference is, is the user the, the typical user and probably the most often user the table would be the most useful for us yes. right yeah. the person like me i can go to the glossary because like you guys were talking about the definitions in the back of this document. Well, that's very typical because that's where a glossary mm -hmm. or an appendix is. And that's where a person is used to looking for it. Mm -hmm. So it serves well because that's kind of how mm -hmm. books and reference documents are. Structured. Local building codes have uh, definitions in chapter two. Sure. Yeah, and the only sure. reason I suggested that those definitions become the new chapter two is because in the previous three titles, each title had the definitions up front. Sure. I, I'm not hard over on either one because you're right, a glossary is generally at the end of a But a document. for this, I think you're right that from just the, I don't mean to inject so much to you all. I just, oh, I'm you're, interested you're gonna in have to deal with this. Okay. <laughs> so. Is that um, the typical user, most people that are in this book would look at the table. And so for convenience, it would make sense for it to be to the front. Okay. Mm -hmm. And followed by more detail, but okay. I like the idea. If you don't want the short definition of the reference to the section that does define what that means, so that you can easily find it. Yep, refer to that you. would work great. Yeah, great. Right, the and, and, uh, a comment that we got from the from council from rusty on our rules and procedures since this document if and when it is approved is going to be available electronically 
it would be nice not only to have that reference, say, in the tape, but also to have a hot link. Oh, sure. To the tape. Yeah. 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 I think but that's yeah. pretty much understood. That's, that's going to happen. So we'd be moving this to here. So <laughs> back here at the no, front of the chapter way. two, um, and I, I'm, I'm going to flat out tell you I cheated. I went back to my last successful code project I did to look at how we handled this. Um, so here at the front of chapter two, we've got zone districts established and we're designating the cities divided into the following districts. Um, in my last project, we actually listed it as uh, the purpose of the residential low density zone district is to identify and zone land for predominantly single family uses. Um, the purpose of the residential mobile home or RMH, yeah, residential mobile homes district is to provide spaces for mobile homes in an overall planned environment specifically tailored to the requirements of the mobile homes and their residents. So it's a purpose statement behind the zone districts as opposed to a definition or an intent. I don't know if that gets us back to the problems with uh, what um, Lee mentioned about multifamily housing being for attached dwelling units, but we didn't really mean it. Um, <laughs> it was defined in this that latter section. So the purpose is to be stated up front and then re reference whatever section is appropriate. And yeah, for the rest of the details definition. and then the, 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 the table of uses in a different section. Yes. I wouldn't call it a purpose. I'd call it a brief description of the zone. Well, what they said we previously listed as the purpose of the zone district was for blah, blah, blah. Yep. And we're going to have that later on under each section, right? kind of a detailed purpose statement. I think what I'm hearing Karen say is on page one, where we say urban residential, you know, then say the purpose is to create a more dense living environment for single family residents, whatever the definition is, C section 203B or whatever it is. And then in that section, we go in more specifically with the square footages of the lots and setbacks and whatnot. So why wouldn't why wouldn't you just put the link in there like you had suggested to like with suburban residential? Oh well, yeah, well, the link we'll to have two point or hyperlink or yeah, whatever. Hyper, to yeah, two point oh two oh one. Yeah. Which one, is where you get the purpose the, the paragraph description. One one suggestion regarding reference you now it's Insofar as the hyperlink, it may not matter, but these things are also written as paper documents. So mm -hmm. these things are edited and changed. Um, early on in the new text that was written by, drafted by a consultant, it tended to write things like nonconformity section such and such. Mm -hmm. As we've gone through the document here more and more, it's just saying C section such and such. If numbers get first, shouldn't it say C section, C section table of uses? section 1, 1. 1.2.3 or something like that because when it says section number with no other reference yeah, identify if, the the, if the number of any chance gets wrong the document is hopelessly confused where if you have a title <laughs> and a title and a number it's under it's understandable before you got there what you're looking for yeah plus if there's ever a number problem you haven't lost you haven't lost the connection and you're not going to hear. it'll be time consuming for whoever's going to be cleaning this up but i think that makes sense it's, it's one thing to say it's like valid already found a reference for uh section 6.27 it doesn't well it does actually say non-conformities but that should that's what you're asking exactly. for it, every time you say C or reference section, whatever, put the title. The of it. title yeah, that's fine. Title. Yeah, I think that Probably makes sense. That way you know where you're going even yep. as well before you got there. Yep. And I understand the, the the idea behind the purpose of suburban residential, for example, but I still think you need to say suburban residential is this larger lot size. Yeah. yeah, larger lots. Are you in a I, I think these brief descriptions are very good, but if you want to say, because the, the, the title of the section is the, designated. What I see is by saying the purpose, it doesn't tie you in if there's a, a misinterpretation here. So the purpose is just in general terms, and then we go to the back more specific, and those would be more enforceable in the specific sections. And that would get the vagueness allowed in the short description and not finding it 
in detail okay. or being restricted. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I would say thinking about what Carol was saying is you know, the purpose of a, a urban residential is a single family dwelling on urban sized lot. You don't even have to go any further than that in your one liner and then you reference the detail. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and the purpose of a suburban lot is uh, you know single family dwelling on a larger lot. And don't put the numbers in there, but that would be contained in your details and then in the table. Well, that, yeah, I I, I agree with you. It's not saying the same thing. We got a direction, well, pretty much. Yeah. No, I, I I still think those two districts are are very distinct in the size of the lot. So just to say a larger lot or a smaller lot. I, the, these are such brief descriptions. I don't think that we're wasting too many characters. By <laughs> well, I, I guess the thing that would bother me, the, the concern I would have, Carol, in that is if you put that lot size here, then I wouldn't repeat that lot size in the detail mm -hmm. definition. And really, I think that's where it belongs. If you repeated it, then you worry about at some point in time of them getting out of sync. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and let's just talk about in the general definition here, of what the theme is. Part of the challenge between um, a suburban residential and urban residential is there's not a big distinction between those two zone districts to start with. It really is smaller versus lot size. And that's about it between those two districts. And density. Well, that would be the density associated with the, the yeah. you know, the lot size. Lot size and yeah. density. Right, but then you have to, you have to be careful that, you know, we're getting out of brief description and then description, you know, why not just merge them all together and make it a description? Yeah, we don't want you know, to- Once you start adding all this extra stuff in there, it's no longer a brief description. Mm -hmm. So since the major description differences between suburban and urban is the lot size, it does seem appropriate to put the lot size designations in, in this brief description. Those are the only as long two. as you're careful, because it actually it's an average lot size. The smallest it's there's and a that's difference. Why the difference of, between the minimum. That's why the use of purpose is nice in these descriptions, and then the specifics being later in the right. sections. So because the minimum goes down to fifteen. <laughs> I, I had the opportunity to work with Lou when we and, and Valerie when we did the tiny home project, okay. and we did get caught up in every single word. You know, it didn't say attached or detached or did or didn't. You know, under the purpose statement, the intent. You know, did it say that back there under permitted uses? The use table said one thing. The listing that we had listed here, the code had another. So there was conflicting provisions throughout that the whole thing. And we were tasked with, did Sally make the right decision at that time in approving this particular project? And based on the information that she gave us and how she interpreted the code and how, how that ran out, we said, yeah, she did. And, but the problem was, and we spent a whole lot of time talking about those words. So it's so important that when we talk about a description of the, of the zoning district, we don't have something there that's going to conflict with something else later. Would it help if the, maybe the language just said brief description? That's or what, something to, to, you know, notify someone who's the lay right, person right. that says there's more coming. Well, if, well, that's, don't go this. well that's where, if you go yeah. back to what Lisa right. said, put the, put the section number right at the end of that brief description so that somebody knows that's where more detail is. Right. It's just, a, it's just adding a few words. So technically, yes, we should say it once and only once to make reference to it. Yeah. However, for the convenience of the user, it's nice to have it. So that's kind of the, the trade off. Mm -hmm. Use the word brief description. I guess that's a good way to go. You know, you guys bring up an interesting point. Um, in this, the idea is to make it more user friendly and easier to get to the information that you want. Uh, it seems like going through this so far that we're putting a summary section at the beginning of each section. 
describing some basic stuff and then the details further down. And if you had this in a, a table format, said, here's the following districts, and you just listed each district, then you had a little block that said, you know, description, and then you had another block that said code section, and it just gave you the number of where you go. It would be more like a, an index table that you could use to jump where you want to go. And we could actually make it with hyperlinks online so they could just click on that for sub, suburban residential and jump, you know, it, it could be a very friendly document. Um, just as a suggestion, something, something I've seen done in other documents. But this is like an index to all the zones right here. It's just very clunky and awkward. And so, Ken, Ken, thank you for commenting. I forgot you were there. <laughs> uh, I'm so not sleeping. You, I'm still awake. <laughs> are, are you saying then that instead of that we take I'm just saying, the, you know, we've got these sub paragraphs. Yeah, gotcha. And, and you could make this little, okay, we're talking about the zoning districts. Here they are. And here's a link to the rather part of the document for each one of those zoning districts. And it's it's in a little table like that, yep. Suburban residential, uh, single family resident with lot sizes, whatever. And then section, whatever the section number is, and you click on it and it goes to that part. In other words, don't, don't waste any time on this uh, list of- Don't try and explain it all here, just take them right to what they need. Okay. You know, anyway. I, and just get rid of uh, 2.1 altogether. Well, no, you can that's still name that, saying, name no. that as a paragraph, but just have just the table sure. there. I think he's saying make 2.01 a table. Take, no, I table. think basically he's saying he wants the words that are there with a hyperlink at the end of it to the section number, which is... Well, and hyperlink's not part of it. I'm that saying hyperlink. If you're reading line, it, putting the links. No, no. If you're reading it on paper, it's not going to show up as yeah. a hyperlink. It's going to say section, you know, whatever name, section 2.03, whatever. That, that's why you have to spell it that's, out. So somebody that's what, using the but paper. That's what all he wants to do is to add that, that little reference. Okay. Um, yeah. This has been very helpful. <laughs> and um, I, well, no, Jennifer, I saw her doodling there at the table, and um, I've got some other thoughts and ideas that um, we've acknowledged this section definitely needs some more work. We need to think about it holistically um, in terms of the structure of the section and, and, and how things get laid out. So um, let us take another look at this and, um, and come back at another point with um, hopefully this cleared up so it makes yeah, it's just an option. It's just a suggestion. Yeah, no, and it's a good suggestion, Ken. I'm glad you brought up. I'm glad you spoke up out there in Zoom land. Um. Yeah, document <laughs> automation and uh, linking sections uh, within the documents is all, you know, yeah. good for online use now and publication. And we just need to update it for all that as well. Uh, the, the paper can copy still works. Yep. Can I change subject? Change the section? Can Jen tell us why she changed the name of fencing and shrubbery to fencing and screening? Is there there's a real reason for that, right? I, Where are we at? Um, in all of the, on all of these in their descriptions for the various districts, yeah. there's a thing that said used to say fencing and shrubbery. Yeah, no, she um, she talked. Well, to and, and, and actually, I can answer that pretty quickly. Um, we talked about that um, last time when we were talking about antiquated terms, and shrubbery is an antiquated term. Um, so when we update terminology, a lot of times it is fencing and screening is um, the, the language that's used today. Um, you know, or as opposed, or, or landscaping materials as opposed to okay. shrubbery being. Yeah, I, I had the impression that it was intentional on the city's part that they wanted plants and not rocks. Landscaping can be rocks. I, I, that's the only reason for the question. Well, and and screening, you know, can be fencing as opposed to to Whatever. solid Some, trees. It or, could be a blank wall in a building. Absolutely, that's that's the only yeah. reason. So screening is a better word. Well, and that would be that would show up the definition. Yeah. Yeah, I always kind of thought it was like the difference between a girdle and spanks. 
<laughs> one's old and one's new. <laughs> and yet the net effect is basically the same. <laughs> that came from. Okay. Um, I think we've talked about page one pretty extensively. Uh, oh, uh, page... Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Yes. I want everybody to look at A one more time here, a. just the way it's written right now, where it says single family residential lot equivalent of one dwelling per acre, allowing a variety of lot uses with an approved minimum lot size of 15,000 square feet. Just don't comment on that. Just keep that in mind, okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, page two, we talk about boundaries. Any comments or discussion on the boundaries? Do Those we are just copied from the original. I, yeah. I'm not clear on the meaning of 2.01.08. That was original too. It's sure. any change in sort of like in, if there's conditional uses granted for property that doesn't change the zoning. But is there some reason to think that was an issue? I'm not sure. I just don't understand it. Hang on, let me. I mean, I guess if it's never been a problem, we can just leave it. it just... Well, it, it could be a problem, especially when you start down the road of short-term rentals. If, if, if in fact the council decides that short-term rentals could only occur or only exist in a commercial zone. How would that be relevant to deciding the different the area of the zone? Well, a All commercial the zone is... may need to be redesignated as another yeah. type of zone. Oh, well, that's easy. All the rest of these all deal with the map. And the map, okay, when it gotcha. shows, yeah, do yeah, where, does the color, where does the color and that boundary end? If it's the street, it's in the middle of the street. If it's too, you know, it, I, I'm, listening, I'm not sure it's a problem. I'm just saying, I don't no, know. No, it's, 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 it's not a great section. You, you totally flagged a crummy section. Um, <laughs> big, well, no, because what it's, really, what it's really trying to say is if we change these other dimensional standards, that's different than if we change the boundaries on the map. So a map amendment versus a text amendment. Um, that's really what this mm -hmm. is trying to differentiate between. It just does a really crummy job of trying to make that distinction. So are you saying delete it? No, um, we're saying maybe reword it, but yeah. uh, maybe that's a future change. All right, at some point along the line, if someone understands what it should say, please propose a revision. Yeah, but that, that's the distinction it's trying to make because when I look at it, you know, any change to the criteria in these other sections, yeah. which is really referring we'll to the individual the zoning to districts, yeah. shall not change the boundaries on the map. So we've already got the map, the zone districts are established in terms of where they are located. But if I change the standard to now um, a 20,000 square foot lot size instead of 15, that doesn't change where this map shows the districts lie. That's a different I, wonder, I never occurred to me that it would have, but I suppose. That's what this is trying to say. It, and it's doing a bad job of it, but that's what it's trying to say. Either paraphrase just what you just said or get rid of it. It doesn't belong in that section. Or, or would, it, would it clarify to say the boundaries? Yeah, the boundaries are the same. Let's look at this. Yeah, to see if I'd like to. Check uh, like another code somewhere to see if there is some better um, stock language that somebody else has already figured out how to say this. I, I can pretty much guarantee that. Um, but thank you for flagging this. That yet yeah, this 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 does this needs to this needs work. Well, it, it almost seems like it's addressed in two point zero one point zero three. But I I still envision some, there'd be some circumstance where a boundary on a map could change. The boundary on the map typically changes when somebody asks it to change, yeah. uh, but um, it. Uh, but if you're going in here and, like I said, you're changing something within these standards associated with the district, it's trying to say that that change here does not change the map, the picture on the map. Yeah. Oops. 
<laughs> On uh, 2.01.03, Carol just referenced the boundaries on the zoning map. Do we have an official zoning map? Yes. Mm -hmm. let's, let's identify it as in capital letters and quotation marks, official zoning map of the city of Woodland Park, Colorado. We, we know that's referencing an official document is not shown here. Reference to the city, so is that the council or the <laughs> municipality? Well, that's why I said city of Woodland Park. Well, yeah. Council Member Case was asking. Um, no, the, the there is a there is a zoning map, um, and it's it's on the website. It's a, I guess essentially a standalone document. In the comp plan, it does show um, the zoning map in place at the time that the comp plan was done, and it also shows a future land use map, which identifies um, how we want to be using land in the future in different parts of the city. Has anyone ever been confused? I mean, 2.01.03 says district boundaries are shown in the official zoning map of the city, not capitalized. Has anyone ever been confused about which one it was? Don't they just always ask Karen or her predecessor or successor and then they got it? Or it's on the website or? Well, and then you get a rezoning application that comes in, right? And then you change the and map. Change, and, and the map gets updated as a result of the, the change to a particular parcel. I'm not sure why this would be a problem. Well, I, I'm just saying, let's go ahead. It's, it's an official map. Let's go ahead and capitalize it, one thing. It's just a small letters. What? And, and I thought I'm terrified by saying official zoning map of the city of Park. Well, zoning why map can't defined it, in the definitions? Well, or why can't it be included? It, I don't know. Well, there's maps in here for the signs. Why? Why can't it be included? The current version. I'm not even sure why we have the maps for the signs, but it's. Um, I would be hesitant to try and put the map in the code yeah. document yeah, because yeah, it yeah, does yeah. change. Should be. Um, so that map is actually a consolidation of separate ordinance changes that happen. Right, over time. and so it means that if there was an ordinance change, the page would have to change. But and it's it's big in order to read it. Oh, so, that's true. Yeah, I mean, it didn't stop anybody in the signs. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's lovely maps for the signs. Anything else on boundaries? We're ready to move on to the dimensional standards table. Uh, Jennifer, maybe you can give us a description of what changes or how this was created. Yeah, you're making me dig back in the recesses of a year ago when we put this together. <laughs> um, we, uh, I believe we pulled everything from the existing dimensions that we that are in your current code. Um, I'm going to have to verify that. If you guys see anything that looks different, let me know, and and I can cross check it. I know we that that's what we typically do, and we only change it when we have a discussion with somebody that says let's you know like you all that says let's change it. Yes, I definitely see one right off the very perfect top, right there where you got the cursor. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. fifteen thousand, not five thousand. That must have been a typo. Do you remember that? Huh? Okay. Yes. I live in a suburban residential. I don't want to see a 5,000 lot created next to me. <laughs> no problem. I assume that one was a typo. So. It could be interesting. I fully admit I didn't compare the numbers to the tables on the in the document. So I assume you'll just recheck them all. We, we will double check them all, yes. Did, did we reach a conclusion as to whether or not the description, the subsequent text narrative textual description of the chapters is going, of the districts is going to have information on setbacks, going to have information on height? Are they, and, and if so, on page one, did, did we decide that? I want to look at that because I don't, I, I need to look at that. Okay, if, you guys don't if they're both in there, if they're both in there too, I would appreciate some introductory 
I think I mentioned this before, mm -hmm, some mm -hmm. prefatory language on the table saying, for convenience of the reader, this is intended to be a summary of the applicable requirements as specifically set forth in the following. Good stages. point. Something yeah, like that. Help. Yep. Only a summary. Yeah. Valerie, Plus, I spent way exactly. too much time going back between all these numbers. I, uh, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I and said, nope, I trust them. Yeah, I mean, well, I you think actually we can probably get it right, but there's too I many different so. references if you do them twice, and they can drift over time too. It's just not a good idea. Yeah, and I know Karen said that she's going to have to look through this. We'll have to look through this together. But um, my recommendation would be, if we like the table, to eliminate the dimensional standards later on. Here, let me get down to the section and show you. Um, like in three two point oh three point oh one point oh five talks about the building height. Um, I think if it's already in the table, I, I think it's redundant to have it in the text and in the table. And exactly. there's, um, you're setting yourself up for changing one at some point and forgetting to change the other and having inconsistencies. So that that's right. just my rec professional recommendation on that. As like you're that make sure you don't lose explanations though, like you know, what's the setback required when there's an overhanging roof? What's the setback required when the porch right. is closed or not enclosed? You know, and I'm used to seeing that set up in a, a different section um, that yes. talks about um, applying the dimensional standards. Um, there's there's different ways to, to do that. And um, the way we currently have it structured is not great and it leaves some holes. And um, one thing where Dave and I have gone um, round and round several times and he asks me this question regularly, I think just to see if I'm gonna change my mind is um, lovely reverse corner lots or basically oh, yeah. lots with multiple frontages and I'm um, applying setbacks and what's the front yard versus the setback. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's a crazy brain damaging exercise based on the language in our regulations now. So, there are much cleaner ways to set yeah, that some up. Some of it partly but, done, for instance, there's footnotes in this table, which, can, which for instance, talk about the reverse corner yeah. line. Um, so and, there and are, that's, there's an attempt to get some of that in. The there's a better way to, to get some of that that set up. Um, I mean, they did a great job trying to pull um, the craziness out of our, our current regulations, but I think we can we can take it one more step to improve it even more. But remember, if you take out <clears throat> the heights, the text textual part of the like height, pick one, the 203 or 105, you're still gonna have to reference those, um, have those ordinances that apply to that somewhere because you, you wanna tie it together. I, I don't know. I, has that is that a legal requirement that we reference every time the ordinance changed in parentheses after the section? I thought it was, but it's probably a lawyer question. It's not a legal requirement. A lot of codes do it just to track the changes over time. Um, when you do a wholesale reorganization like this, um, it, it's a big question. A lot of times, people will take it out and just kind of start with a new clean palette on this new one and then moving forward, any amendments, identify them. Uh, but it, it's not a requirement. So going forward, is that something that we have consensus on is that we, just for brevity, eliminate the references to how many times the ordinance change, an ordinance changed that particular section. That's a good point too, because we're going to be moving from the zoning subdivision and mobile home titles to a brand new title. Why not start clean? I think it simplifies the document if we don't have all these obscure mm -hmm. references. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, I'd prefer not to have them unless there's a valid need to do so. Yeah, the planning department probably wants to contain a, a list of these to help find stuff and to be able to document things historically, but no one else is ever going to want to do it. Well, and quite honestly, that's why um, um, my preference has always been whatever that last code was, you know, before you do that wholesale change, you keep that document, right. mm -hmm. yes. you know, that yes. that's, that's the go back to, um, mm -hmm. as opposed to trying to track all the, the, the in-between stuff. Um, I, yeah, no, I, I'm comfortable with eliminating all those things. And just like I said, if we need to reference from a prior version, um, you know, we're, we're holding on to that. 
<laughs> um, before we get away from these uh, the tables, uh, I had a question on page two, the first row. What is that referring to? There's no title. Page three. Page four, actually. I'm sorry. Yeah, the second page, page four. Of the title. So here, um, continuation of residential. Just like a blank. Or um, is, it, is it max? Yeah. Well, it's it's maximum, maximum, height. maximum height. Maximum height, I think, is what, but it yeah. should say continued, maybe. Yeah, it's maximum height just for accessory. Well, or a fourth page. Previous page, yeah, no, it is. Building, it's, this is maximum it's for accessory. Building. It's going to. It's the same. Oh, okay. so it's intended to be one. Uh, intended to be one row. It's going to change yeah. again and again and again until we get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the page break is in a really bad spot. Yeah, or a better way to do it is to put one on each page and don't try and combine them. Just one table per page. I would agree. And yeah. don't 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 let them cross pages. Right. Yeah, um, maximum height would be on the next page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ironically, um, I had that one time, and we sent it off to the um, code consolidator or whatever they're called, Contact. and. Um, what we got back is not what I sent them because they were just really diligent about no the page blank handed here. Good luck with that. You know, it was mm. like, no. <laughs> so we will do our best to avoid that. Going back to page three under maximum height under mobile home park, it says 20 feet. Is that a reference in the mobile home park section? I couldn't find it. I don't know. We can previously from what I looked because I looked up that one. There wasn't anything that I could find. Yeah, I couldn't find previously. So I, I wasn't sure if I was crazy and missed it, but so I didn't if, find a reference. So if we're going to keep tables and narrative under each of the sections, we got to make sure we're speaking the same page. Yeah. And if it says 20 feet in the table, and if we want 20 feet, and then we need to make sure that how many two story. Oh, I don't know. It's for the zone, so there could be accessory buildings yeah. within yeah. that zone. Uh, yeah. So there could be accessory building next to there. <laughs> Ten foot high mobile home. <laughs> well, there's there's no height requirement for accessory buildings in the mobile home park. No, there's no. It's twenty foot height. Yes, there is. As in the table, hey. twenty feet. Oh, okay. Right. Main and accessory. Well, that's right. These are for main buildings here. Uh, this is 20 feet for any structure, apparently. It, well, yeah. it's, it's on the mobile home park section. I mean, oh. Here it is, it's in the table. Yeah. yeah it's not it, exact. That needs to be. There's, a, there, there's something in there about, I think it did, I think it is supposed to refer to a, some kind of a building. I'll find it. Is it an accessory building? No, it's. Uh, um, okay. One thing that's a, a little more substantive to ponder. Um, and um, this may or may not be uh, the time to include it, is when we talk about building height here in Woodland Park and how we measure building height, it's um, you know the average grade around the building to the highest point on the roof. And um, the Board of Adjustment is seeing uh, variances um, partly because you end up with some steep slopes and then um, you throw in a pitched roof. Um, and then sometimes you've got issues where the developer wants to do nine foot ceilings since that's what's desirable out there in the market. And um, those things compound together to then trigger a, a height variance uh, request. So the question I had is um, in our standards, do we wanna add a standard for like maximum number of stories of a building in a zone district. No. Um, you know, is it the dimensional? No, I would keep the dimensional, but I would also add I maximum number of stories. Yeah. Um, I would potentially increase that dimensional um, to like 35 feet, but if your maximum number of stories yeah. is three. It, this comes back to, at least I thought we were having a discussion a couple of weeks ago on it. Right? If there's if there's an area something that technology time has brought and we've missed like 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 microwave re, you know, retransmitter in a lobby of a building we have we, or um, recharge sites for micro mobility I mean, this is stuff which time has brought it's mm -hmm. a new thing something that's been a long established policy some controversies attached to it for us to pick that up as part of the codification and say well let's it, you know thirty feet's tough sometimes let's make it thirty five if it's who knows. 
I don't think that's the way we should go in this process. It, this isn't the opportunity to go to go change stuff. I mean, it's filling in where it's missing or where we find there's some conflict or something else, something new, but that's... Okay. I would agree. And story, agree. stories would be... Maybe valid discussion, but not, not okay. for review of this. But I planted the seed for thought. Yeah. You guys, well, it, you know, so. look, drive around Woodland Park and look at things and, and think about stuff. And um, yeah, because we did have an application where somebody came in asking for, well, you got a steep slope. And um, no, it no. was not. No, if you're it's talking, talking about the one, they dug a monstrous hole, and they're going to have dirt on three sides. So there's various. So the average, the average yeah. grade is much higher than it looks. And they're fair. And they no, 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 no. They they came in with um, a steep slope, um, drive under garages, so things are partially submerged, and then they wanted three stories and a roof deck. So when you got done adding things up, it was essentially a five-story building. And you're right, so, we, that is something that needs to be addressed or contemplated at some point in time. But I, I, I agree with Lee, this, uh, it, and maybe we just need to have a little placard in front of us, you know, what, what is our objective here? <laughs> our objective is consolidation and brevity, not okay. add or subtract. And, and the city council's gotta be able to deal with this out without having series of landmines that they can run into. Well, so, should that be on a case-by-case -case basis then, depending on what that case is? You know, have to to just judge to how we that. apply this rule right. it takes some yeah. judgment. But. But, okay, so this does turn into a great example of things to potentially look at through a different project, yep. and it may be architectural design standards. And mm -hmm. um, I really think uh, that's a conversation that um, this community needs to think about is, what do we want in terms of number of stories in our buildings here? Um, and I, I, my personal assessment is things beyond three are potentially problematic um, well, in terms of what we like fire to, department. Well, well, in terms of what we like to see when we look at Woodland Park and what do we think of Woodland Park and our built environment. Mm -hmm. I, I so, agree. agree. Now, now in, in our position and as the Board of Adjustment, because we wrestled with this, um, even as it's stated here, that talks about a maximum height. And I guess the ordinance says it's at the roof level. Someplace we need to define. Is that defined in this? New how, we, how we measure that maximum height, what constitutes that height. A number of us, for example, maximum height is the tallest thing on top of the building. When you talk about maximum height, the, a roof, what does a roof mean? Does yeah. it mean? In the case that um, Lee's to, um, yeah. um, Lou's talking about is, um, is it the top of the parapet wall? Is it the roof surface? Or is it the top of the elevator shaft? Which one of those is the highest point on the if building? If the elevator shaft has a top on it, is that the roof? I think so. <laughs> Even if it doesn't have. Yeah, you can help with it, but it would have been handier. I mean, I would like to see that level of detail. That's something you need to help us with. If we've got, if that's, if it's unclear as it's written, we need to write it, write it. Clearly. Right, right. It to doesn't give us the guidance. chimneys, but it does include the tops of, of yeah, we, elevator roofs or whatever you come up with. That the developer wasn't happy with that. But I didn't find. We concurred on how it was defined, but they no, didn't. It's, yeah. it's there. It's, yeah, it this is, is probably yeah. building height. It's either subdivision or zoning. It's somewhere it's there's something. So it's building height? Yep. Yeah. Building height. Oh, okay. Wouldn't an architect be able to help you with that? <laughs> Their I architect, mean, okay, we, really, can't, we can't go there. You can look at the Zoom thing on it. No, I mean, I mean the from a definition. It's defined state. differently. I, they, it, yeah, yeah it, one person's. Or in this is the highest there's, there's got to be some standard somewhere that state, states states this yeah. yeah i mean this is leadership has a roof that's part of it. i would have thought yeah i don't know what this was in the, so, well, the highest point of the structure it still goes back to I, is that something that we want to address in this no. review no the number of stories no but maybe cleaning up you know how we measure well, maybe I don't know. If, if there has been great controversy on what average grade means, so I understand average grade means each of the four corners of a building mm -hmm. where it gets out of the ground, you average those and decide that's the bottom. Well, unless but you take it, a ground line and take the total uh, 
Yeah, yeah unless you, it, 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 you could modify, you could, it. but you know, does if that if that's been a problem, if, Dave, if, <laughs> if it's a problem, I would think fixing that fits within something that could be within our purview. If in, in, the, definition. Yeah, in the definition, the, the top, the height is a problem too. Well, yeah. Yeah. the total height varies total based height on the and, definition and of what height not from is. Where you measure it, and so, thirty feet might be agreeable. It says the highest thing. point of the roof. The roof is. But how do you define the roof? Right. Well, okay. Highest point of a structure. Right. We should have said the highest point of a structure. Yeah, you know the what see, see, you're going down the <laughs> right <laughs> <hole>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, definitions Sorry. to yeah. further discussion. Yeah. So, we do have, so when you look at this and we talk about customers, obviously customer is somebody that's a developer, somebody building something. But the other side of it is the customer is these poor guys that are in support of adjustment that try to make understand what the how much people room we have uh, or a filter or a developer. are these common questions you get asked Unfortunately, it's yeah. yes. because I mean, you, we talked about being in the weeds. We want to make sure that whatever's in the weeds or whatever somebody's scavenging and hunting for, we make sure we shore those up. But on a developer, it makes a big difference how tall the building can be based and on the design and everything else. Just depends upon is what my vision is and, and what I need for density to make the project cash flow. That's yeah. basically that's you know, pretty that's much why I got done there. I would one. propose that we, we we don't search out for problems and you know mysteries to try and create, but where it's a known problem and people are here, other boards telling us it's a known problem. If if it's okay. reasonable to fit it in the definition, then that's okay. You know. so your your question sure, about the, the mobile home park twenty feet thing, it's a it was an added thing. Okay. With by the oh, tiny homes. No, 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 no. In the mobile home the park district, yeah. there is, is an addition in there of height and it's all in red. So it's a whole new line that was never in there before. That's right. where the 20 feet came from. So it, it says any structure hereafter erected or structurally altered in the MHP district shall not exceed 20 feet. So, and it's any structure, it's not, RV oh. or the mobile home, or well, I guess it could be well, if you had a two idea. story. I don't know. It could be, just like you said, it's a mobile home, it's accessory, 20 feet, whatever. So I would it. suggest on the dimensional table, we change maximum height to maximum building height to be consistent with the definitions. It's build, building height of is the definition. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Also, I'd like to say, too, in, in, in backing up what uh, Karen has said, I wrote down in my notes here where we had a 30 foot height for main buildings on the maximum building height. I had 35 or three stories on one of my comments. And like, and like we discussed, that three stories may be a different, more substantive topic, but I, I've at least planted the seeds and you kind of understand the, <laughs> yep. the wisdom and the rationale behind some of that. But uh, Okay. Um, we got through tables. I think any other comments on the table? I have some um, small, small one. DU is not defined. When we get dwelling units, we ought to add a parenthesis DU because I assume that's what DU means. I don't believe it's defined in this section, this area here, or in the. Where are you exactly? Um, dwelling dimensional standard. Dwelling units per acre. Yeah, dwelling <laughs> maximum one density. du per acre. We just need to add yeah. du yeah. in a parenthesis for dwelling unit in the dwelling unit definition because it's undefined. Or you could just add another footnote on this table. Well, in, in the if in fact we keep the the short definition section. Yeah. Dwelling unit is there and it should be there. It is, and you just put right. DU in parentheses That's beside it. it and so, all the others. Are there any changes beyond labeling in the various sections of definitions for um, zoning types? I wrote down under. Residential MFS and MFU maximum density area. And I'm trying to remember. Help me on what page are you on? I'm on page four. I'm still on the table. Table, okay. Okay. Um, 
Give me a minute here so I can get my thought together. Okay. Under, for instance, urban residential districts, we have a section called area requirements. And we don't have that under the multifamily. We have a number of dwelling units per acre. And that's where <coughs> under one. the area requirements. Are, and uh, there's one. It area talks about that. The suburban. For urban, it's on page 10, area requirements. Yep. So you're saying that should be. We should have that. Under it, every. It, yeah, should have a maximum density in the, in the area. Yeah. It's on, it's, it's for suburban and urban, it has it. So where else should it go? Well, I'm thinking they need to go under the multifamily. Oh. Suburban and multifamily urban as well. Four. I'm still on the table. Residential section. Yes, residential section. Top of the page. Four. It's I'm confused because I'm seeing numbers in that. It, it. It's not in the table. As a matter of fact, it's in the detailed descriptions of each of the districts. So under suburban ur and urban, you will see area requirements, right. like for instance, page oh, okay. 10. It gives lot size and also yeah. gives area. Mm -hmm. So that's why I thought the appropriate place for that. So it, it is not included under multifamily. And some I'm of this is you try and squeeze this into the table, it gets to be some of the problems with the table being the governing rule as opposed to the text. They gotta be there. Yeah, I don't know where you're seeing it in the table, Larry, but I, I did see that under the detailed descriptions oh, of I the districts. Too. But under the table. You should add it to the, oh, oh, oh. A, oh, yeah. Are you talking density. about the maximum density? It does have minimum lot size. Okay, for example, to get everybody looking at the same thing, um, Jennifer, bottom of page 10, uh, maybe top of page 11 in your world okay, series, there's requirements. been edits. Uh, 2.03, 0.08, um, area requirements. And no, this type of language does not show up in every single one of the zoning districts. Um, it would have been interesting to have been here in 2000 when this change was put together. Um, and it's, it's just kind of an odd way to, to word things. And I'm not sure what problem they were trying to solve at the time. Um, other than yes, you can potentially have a lot as small as 7,500 square feet. Um, but our overall density, we want to maintain at this other level. Um, so it gives you the ability to unevenly split something, you know, that depending upon like, it, it, it might've had to do with where existing structures were because sometimes you end up with two old houses on the same property and you now want to divide it. And mm -hmm. I can't get to two equal size lots because of where they're positioned. So I want to be able to get a smaller lot in. I mean, I can see this whole crazy mm -hmm. line of logic mm -hmm. to, to potentially get to this very carefully worded paragraph so that we could say yes to as many people as possible. Maybe that the section should say area requirements or area and minimal lot size requirements. So and the other thing I want to point out is it's existing language. This is I not know. a change. I know. <laughs> I, I put this in the category of, of let's not mess with it unless we're really hurting for things to talk yeah, about. Yeah, it, it, if there were any other place for that to be added to address whatever that issue was back in 2000, it might be under multifamily, but I don't think so. You can certainly go back to the minutes of that meeting when that ordinance is adopted and see what the issue was. Because I think back then we didn't 
did more than just action minutes. I don't know, just a suggestion. Yeah, no, we can take a look, but okay. the couple of if things I've wanted looked for, to. they've not been successful. I don't remember months. what it was. <laughs> right, but they're already pre-existing though. I don't know if we want to get too into the weeds. Are you guys comfortable anyway, leaving this alone? It's, or a, you... it's a good example of the table and the provisions in the, in the, under the individual zone districts may not be the same. So we need to be yeah. careful. Well, and this really does refer more to existing conditions than going forward. Yeah. If I, if I, so going forward, you know, if anybody's, well, I got to think about it. Never mind. I'm, I'm just, I'm confused about one thing. Are we objecting to having a minimum lot size listed here at 7,500 for the UR? I think the discrepancy is that that information is not included in the table. Right. But we have to be careful. Well, but it is because it said under UR, it says 7,500 square foot with the footnote of number three. And it, it says why, the, why that is that the previous platted lots of record that existed prior to January 1, 2, um, 2001 are, are exempt from that requirement. So I, I, I'm i missing what's not covered. But then you, so Larry, you'd go back to this not being inclusive of everything and this is just a general. And I think that was part of the suggestion about this is only general verbiage. We've got better verbiage later here for you. And I think we have to be careful that we're not cramming everything into the table. Because but it, no but it is that. there because it's a footnote on the table and there's a, there's a set of footnotes Right. underneath it right let's say what it is it's... no and i'm agreeing with you yeah. i'm saying the same thing you are okay i'm just saying we have to be no. careful yeah. no, not no. to cram everything in there I regardless yes yeah. confusing i'm sitting there saying but it's described no no no, no. i'm agree i'm agreeing with you that same on that same thing <laughs> handle this is the table says the the places that are already platted in what 2001 prior to 2001 exempt we already said that at the beginning of this that that said those things that are grandfathered are already right yeah. approved so if i wanted to look at this as trying to simplify the document maybe we don't even need to to say that at all and get back into the history of it do I really want to have future plats in a suburban residential to be as small as 7,500? I mean, if, we, if the only reason well, it's in here be. is because it was grandfathered, then this is the time to take it out because we already said what's grandfathered is grandfathered. Yeah, no, and, and where it is, is it's going forward. They want to, as much as you can have a 15,000 square foot lot, um, the maximum density is two dwelling units per acre. So my suggestion, Jennifer, is um, in the table after minimum lot size to create another row that says maximum density. We do have a, tape, uh, a line maximum. at the end of the table that says maximum, maximum density. density line on the top of page four. Yeah, yeah. top okay. of page four. Um, and then that's potentially where that footnote goes. Uh -huh. um, that the well, well, and then the footnote may need to be duplicated there. You know, that number three, um, just so that we're getting back to that, not applying to lots existing prior to January one of two thousand one. Is it is it loose is it loose point right that is it loose point right that in fact. If the requirement going forward is fifteen thousand feet, it says that with we already we already knew that if someone had fourteen thousand nine hundred from the previous millennium, that's good. They can keep it. We don't really need that. Actually, that is thinking about. It. We don't really need that whole area requirement section. Time is passed to buy. It just it it's it states there's a minimum requirement which we already knew. And in historic, we, in the reference in his, historic, in a smaller one historically is. But if there is an existing lot that's too small and has not been developed, and you want to come in and place a house on it, are they prohibited from building on that if the lots? Well, that's then we need to dr address that in the non conforming section. That, that is the general provision. 
because as long as I remember in the suburban or a or one zone district has always been 15,000 square feet. Yeah. Ever since beginning zoning ordinance for the city, 1949, it's at 15,000 square feet. So it hasn't changed. And that's, that's kind of really sets the character for the city of Wilmington Park. I, I so. would not delete it because it's, it's, there's no, no misunderstanding. You've got it in two places for urban and suburban. Yeah. Like we need the area do. requirements and the question is do we adjust the table? The table. Yeah. You could just move the, the, the density um, just a line, yep. maximum density, put it right under minimum lot size, and then they're right there next to each other. That's a good point. In the table. I like that. On top of page four, right where we were just talking about maximum density, and right above that is that blank cell. And we talked about that, and that it's carry over from the building height. 25 foot for accessory building runs across the top of that table on page four. Mm -hmm. uh, the section itself, dealing with those zoning districts, is 20 feet. So again, there's a a good example of the table and the districts not, not matching. Okay. <laughs> now, one more comment on the table, and that's on page five. You look under table 2.02-3, and we talk about uh, open, uh, and miscellaneous, and under that is agricultural. That 10 acres for minimum lot size is for residential units. And you look at the agricultural district. So you can, you, if you just have an agricultural lot with no structure on it, uh, you don't have a minimum lot size. Okay, it needs a footnote seven then. I ask a favor sure. in your table when there's an acronym like DU, have it capitalized because it looks like an unfinished word. And it just says <laughs> do yeah. yeah. <laughs> It just will help, I think. Most I of the others are. And the question was an act. You know, Thank you. I think it's a ceremony in the definition where it defines DU. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or, or a footnote on any of the tables. No, no, just Mr. Chairman, so it's almost nine o'clock. Yes, it is. And that's my bedtime. <laughs> is, it, is it possible that we can? Adjourn tonight. Come um, back and start. Start right stretching here. up to see if we can talk through the rest of this. I, I would like to get to uh, chapter, chapter two. two unless we have some more substantial discussions. I think all the changes appear to be titles. So if we could take a few minutes and see if we could at least, I'd like to finish this tonight, this chapter, if at all possible. Uh, we can revisit the adjournment. In a few minutes. Okay. Okay. If you don't mind. No. No problem. So, are there any substantive changes to the definitions or the discussion in the rest of this chapter? And at least a quick review. It looks like all the red marks are for title changes. So, Jennifer, are there anything of note that we should be paying attention to besides shrubbery? And solid, solid classification of fences has a new has a new sentence. On page one, page nine. Yeah, page nine. Oh, that's in, yeah. I got the three. I'm sorry, I jumped ahead to three. Don't forget that. Okay. <laughs> well, we yes, Lou. Taking out 
that the workers of the ordinances, starting with the clean slate, maybe at least think about if it would be useful to include not the history, but the last ordinance, so that there is some traceability of where did this come from, not having to get to be the way it is. But, but what was the you sort Karen of got that with the crossed out text. Yeah, Karen, the crossed out text basically shows that. Karen, you know. Karen had suggested just using the last previous one, so you've got some reference, oh, okay. but sorry. not I all was, of the I other. You guys were thinking of eliminating it entirely. I was, but <laughs> <laughs> Ken, maybe we can just go page by page. Okay. Any changes on page six or whatever? Okay, so we're, so we're, we're back to off. six. <laughs> Go back to page six. Any okay. comments there? Yes. Larry, maybe you should go. Larry, you're <laughs> turning into a pumpkin. <laughs> I know. Is it of new text? That's the next question, or is it old text? I, I'm, look, I'm looking at the purposes section. Okay. And it says these areas are primarily located in the periphery of the established urban areas. Single family housing. Well, Again, I'm going to reference our terrible experience with tiny homes. The next line says single family housing. I think we need to be specific to the definitions that are proposed and put uh, dwelling single family detached. I think we're going to need to look at that in conjunction with um, the, the use table. Okay. Because um, yeah, no, I I I, I got to look at it in conjunction with the use table. Um, yeah, I know that single family is a unit onto itself and it's not attached to anything else, but and we need to keep that in our suburban residential district. No, they make single family attached housing now. It's basically a townhome by another name. Just FYI. Yep. <laughs> in, in, yeah. in in another zone district. So dwelling single family detached. Mm -hmm. Well, again, going back to the definitions that were proposed. I mean, it comes down to a definition, right? Because it says the density is one dwelling unit. So if it's, if it's a duplex, does it, does it count as two dwelling units or what? It's multifamily. One. Okay. If there are townhomes with the, or we've got setbacks, so we can't even do joining properties. Right. They, well, they, new definitions are created for dwelling single family attached. And that leaves dwelling single family, nothing presumably detached. So when we get to the definition, we want to look at it there. Yep. Okay. Um, page seven, changing allowed or from permitted to allowed. I think that's consistent. Any comments or further discussion on that? I've changed the title to, to allowed uses. Yes, instead of permitted uses. Yes. Yep. Okay. That was page seven. Between conditional use section and the clustered use section, let's add the planned conditional, something that we've been talking about for a long time. Uh, we, we, need, we have three different classifications allowed. Right, Kelly. Allowed, conditional, and now planned conditional. Permitted condition. Uh, permitted condition, excuse me. It's something very similar language. I'm, I'm sorry, could you, I lost the thought there. Okay, we, we have three different uses. Allowed uses. Yeah. We have conditional uses. Yeah. And now we have planned conditionally, permitted conditionally. Where do, we added, added, where do we have permitted conditionally? It's a new definition. It's a definition, but where do we short term have rentals? It's in, it's, it's, well, I know it's a definition, but what, what page are you on where it's by? I'm on page seven. Page seven. Okay, where does it, is that used here? It's, it's a new section right between oh, you're adding a new section. Yep. It's a concept that's already in use in the code, it just lacks a definition. We, we need to recognize that the zoning, the table itself of uses has certain uses identified as PC. And we did put that is included now in yep. the permitted conditionally use permit. Yeah, but 
does that apply to the suburban residential? It's, aside from the name being unacceptable, it's, it's, the concept is not totally well. We'll get that fine. when we get into uh, chapter four, these regulations. Well, we're chapter seven, but well, both, but yeah. Um, yeah. so just you're talking about a placeholder. It sounds just like a it's placeholder, a exactly. We want to be consistent through all, all the districts. And then the next section under height on page seven, again, the example between this section is not compatible with the table dealing with accessory heights. Yep. That should be building height. Yeah. Be consistent with definitions also. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Look at page eight. Page nine. Anything on page 10? Going back to nine, I'm sorry. Yes. Again, again the same thing where we have single family housing under the purpose for urban residential. Let's, let's be consistent again with you know, dwelling, single family detached. <laughs> And the placeholder for permitted conditionally. Yeah, and still on page eight, land use intensity ratios. It references 5.02. It isn't what we're looking for the table in 5.02.01.23. That's what I call the land intensity ratios tables in add 0.01.2.23. And that's pretty much only addressing single family dwellings, isn't it? Land use and intensity ratios, kind of a lot ratio. What's the intensity ratio? It's the amount of, uh, of space the structures take compared to as a ratio, the entire lot. Five, I just it's, it's explained it's way down in five two. It's uh, five point oh two point oh one point two three. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this is um, a concept that currently shows up in um, the subdivision regulations, uh, which is intriguing because at that point you're dealing with just all vacant land. And then it's really more um, when you're, you're developing the lot with actual structures where you would be wanting to look at that ratio. Another way to, it's sometimes covered like lot coverage would be a concept mm -hmm. um, that potentially makes more sense as opposed to what the, the land use intensity ratio. It's, it's a different way of getting to maximum and amount of the lot. The historical origin of this had to do with drainage concerns probably, right? I'm sorry. So didn't this have to do originally with drainage concerns? Too much impervious. I mean, it's not exactly that, but it relates to that because driveways aren't covered the same way, but it can, historically it can that's where those, I think those sort of rules slipped in. That, that'd be one aspect in terms of why it would be considered. Um, it's a, a different way of getting at somebody who potentially wants three accessory structures, you know, on their, their property, you know, they've got the garage, the shed, and then they decide they need a bigger shop. And you can tell I'm used to dealing with really rural kind of properties with that. Uh, you know, at a certain point, you get all these big structures um, on a property. You just don't have the, the same open space and separation between um, the, the various properties. I'm a, I'm a little confused. I'm sorry with the, when you're looking at things like, cause it's in the intensity things in like in the SR district. I mean, there's, there's a category for that referring it to 05 to 5.02, I mean, and which is this applies is the development section, the PUD section on an individual thing, a house, if it was not in a PUD, if you meet, if you've met all the setbacks, how is that calculated? I mean, I, I don't understand how it applies to 
it, the, it just it just does you can't you can't fill a lot up to all the setbacks right. unless those setbacks it's another, aren't enough percentage it's is, another criteria that needs to be met in addition to setbacks okay i i don't know, I, I don't know how to answer my question right obviously um it's okay i'll think of a better way to ask it and ask you offline and i agree it's pretty strange to have it in a subdivision of regulation where i came from instead of the zoning code now it, we took care of that problem because it's now in a unified development code. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I it's I don't see where the num I just don't see where the number comes from. If you're going to put it, if you're going to have that intensity ratio in all of the sections, I don't see where you're getting the number from. That's all. That's the number. The ratio. You see well, the there's table. not a ratio. There's no number. There's you no. You see the table, don't you? What it's which table? Five. The table, it's in section five, page 11, 5.02.1.2. Chapter five, page 11. That's your land use intensity ratio table. Yeah. I, and um, I see that. And actually, um, our city engineer actually did the math on all of this or created a calculator for us that, you know, if your lot is 5,000 square feet, um, rather than us having to figure out this lovely equation that's here, um, he's got that calculated. Um, so um, there's probably a better way to, to do this table that is exactly the same thing without somebody having to do the brain damaging math. Um, that I can get to Jen that will make this table a little easier to to apply going forward. Yeah, yeah. My problem with it is that it's every house that's just like a single family, uh, an SR type house, isn't necessarily in a subdivision. And this definition is regard is in the section that specifically addresses subdivisions. That's where I'm trying to come from. I, it's, it's, not, it's, in a, it's in a lot. Every house is in a lot, so you can figure it's out. Not necessarily on a subdivision. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying maybe it should be moved to a different section. I, yes. I don't. I mean, yes. if you're going to have it in every section, you, I think it has to be somewhere other than just in the subdivision chapter. In terms no, of the that's reference, where it's, it, that's where it it's, came it's from. referenced in the it's referenced in the zoning sections we're talking about because that's how we in got section it. five the reference goes back to five point oh two land intensity whatever right. in the very first thing on sr levels back um, whatever yeah. page it is it, it's, it's referring false. you back to the subdivision yeah. okay i see where you are i i see where you are i'm not yeah. it just has to be adjusted somehow so it called something else i don't know or, yeah um it's, it's an ad thing we can move it back to title chapter two yeah. it's yeah. a it's an introduction. I don't know, Jen, if you caught that. It's the introductory paragraph to that land use intensity ratio table. Um, yep. Currently on the bottom of page 10 um, in that section. Section so chapter five and five. So yep. five I've got it up on my other screen right now. So, okay. But I guess the question I have is do we even need it in this chapter two? I mean, it's. Oh, no. That, that was the reason for the question. Yeah, that's the yeah. question behind it. it, it and because it's in the SR category, so it's in it's in page eight, it's in page ten for the urban. It's sure, in, sure. I mean, it's it's in all of them. Do it, does it belong in all of them? That's the question. I'm sorry, I'm not being clear. No, you, yeah, gotcha. no, you got a great question, yeah. and it's getting later, so I don't. I definitely don't have an answer for you. So I got it flagged. Same here. I think there's some repetition in all of this zone district chapter, Karen, that we can either bring to the front of this chapter and just yeah. say all zone districts are applicable, you know, mm -hmm. need to uh, conform with X, Y, and Z sections so that we don't have to repeat over and over. Yep. I think we could shorten this chapter from 52 pages to like 20. But we can talk about that. that would be encouraged. Well, I have, I have an explanation of why it needs to be in chapter five subdivisions. Why? Is it this, was this what you're alluding to? The introductory provision of land intensity ratios says you have to, based on that table, you have to put an LCS table in every new subdivision plan. 
goes in the plant. Each single fit, 5020123, page 10, of chapter 5. Each single family lot resulting from a new subdivision of replat of an existing subdivision shall include a lot coverage standard as permitted in table LCS below. Yep, that's it. So the subdivision plat is supposed to, so when, you, when you're buying your house, you're looking at the plat and it'll say, oh, by the way, there's a lot coverage standard. I can't put I can't have 90% of my lot covered by a house. Mm -hmm. So, so, it, that's, that's so why it it's doesn't there. need to be included in chapter two though. That's probably right. As long as people can, I guess people can find it because it's in the plan. That's how people yeah. know. And, and the be, ordinance. And you couldn't use 90% anyway, because so, by so. definition, you got all the setbacks. Gotta, well, yeah, but whatever the setbacks would allow you, you it's, it's, it's more strict than that. Okay. So it, it so it's the right it's in the right section. Okay. Term in there. <laughs> well, we're not going to have to do it. It sounds like we're not going to do it in chapter two because it looks like I think we're heading towards removing the references in chapter two. Let Jen and I take a, a, a yeah, look at that. I mean, you can, me. yeah, to, to make sure it's where it really needs to go and does what it really should be doing, or maybe just encompassing. This, this, and this, and leave it in one section and not have it. In yeah, no, we, we, yeah, I've got it flagged to, to look at. Yeah, 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 there you go. Okay. Keeping with Larry's request, do we foresee a good stopping point anywhere nearby? Uh, uh, I think we're on 10, a, maybe 11. I, I thought we were on the start of 11. I don't know. Yeah, we had all the mobile homes. <laughs> Oh, I didn't want to start that. Well, no, no. local home stuff is all copied. Isn't yeah. it copied it's for verbatim, essentially? Place is copied, right? Yeah. My brain's going crazy. No, and I'm going to say on the mobile home stuff that quite potentially that need because it looks it looks very familiar um, based on what I dealt with in brush um, that um, there's potentially a lot of things in there that really belong under um, I think it's chapter four where you're dealing with use standards since they are standards associated with a mobile home park and then I think there were I saw there's a licensing requirement in there. Uh, that um, typically belongs in a whole other section of the city ordinance and not within the unified development code. Uh, not that not that we're actively annually licensing these things. I, I honestly don't know. I'd have to check with a different department. <laughs> I've, like, I've seen all that like, before. Would you like to jump in and figure out which portions of the mobile home tax should be moved to the use? <laughs> chapter? Um, not tonight, but we can. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, you know, uh, we're pretty much done with single family, urban, and residential. Before we conclude on those okay. sections, is there any further comment on residential text that's in here? And I, from our conversation, um, you guys have flagged some great things that I recognize we need to to look at all of these zoning districts, you know, to, to check for those things, uh, because there is a good degree of consistency in what was brought forward here. So um, some of these, these same issues uh, potentially show up, you know, like making sure those dimensional standards transfer correctly, um, the, the intensity ratio, you know, just some of those kind of mm -hmm. things uh, transfer, trickle down through the, the rest of this chapter too. Well, we made it through 20 pages. Question. Is, the, is the idea here that as we finish section and a week later we'll get a copy that reflects it? And if so, if so, I hate to lose all the previous changes to go through. Will this have some way, at least a, a unique color, to show what was what was new between the last two times we've seen it, or well, or uh, we, suggestion just for how to manage this so we know what's new and what should we what get through this one first get a new one with the changes to look at again 
because we're going to keep going back and back and back if we don't get through some, I guess we need to figure out a goal, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Well, and what would be the overall goal? From working with, with Jennifer, our discussion was to get through this entire draft and get all the, the proposed changes and revisions put together within that. So then you're, you're dealing with a, a, a new document or an updated so work version. through this version yes. front yeah. and back and then get the revised version and we can look at it hopefully it it's again. way even, cleaner even if that's months from now it may be months from now. you know um <laughs> yeah i don't have a i don't have a great we're, we're, I don't have a lot of resources to do this. So yeah, you're, you really are limited on available staff time. And um, that's very challenging. And, um, you know, we recognize we want to get this, this going and moving forward. And this, this is the, and I got to say, um, after tonight's conversation, I do think um, this is actually a way harder project than like, let's start new, quite honestly. Um, it's, 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 yeah well that's a bummer <laughs> yeah <laughs> so our our next scheduled meeting is the 24th no thanksgiving yeah, thanksgiving yeah, thanksgiving. yeah, yeah no, of course we're not so. gonna no <laughs> chairman uh, i move we uh, <laughs> um but we're we're again we're talking i don't know if we have any cases we're talking about another what is our i mean we have some upcoming cases but anything on the schedule is yeah. it? no there's all kinds of things out there in the wings but nothing's gotten ripe yet um it at our level uh staff and, and the consultant we were looking at um december 8th as your next work session um, we recognize the 22nd being right before Christmas. Nobody's going to want to do that to get together. Um, I'm not going anywhere. Um, and there's that fifth Thursday in December. So I don't know how game people were for meeting on the 29th. Um, just for this purpose, not for cases. I'm just trying to keep things moving, Larry. I know. I mean, I'm just thinking <laughs> of my schedule. I hate to have only one Between Christmas and New Year's next year booked. Yeah. So December 8th is our next, our next one. Yeah. yeah. Let's figure out the December 8th work session. Okay. To continue from page 11. Page uh, 11. Multifamily suburban residential. Okay. And I would anticipate it will go quicker because now we've kind of got an idea of how we're slugging through this. I think. Okay. I yeah. Plan on that, then we can look at uh, our calendars. When you say that uh, tonight, you gave us a memo saying we're going to try to work out one and two. We didn't get through all two. Our next work session is going to be involving two and seven. Finish two, and then go back to definitions. Mm -hmm. Seven. Yes. And you work on that until we get it done. Yes, yeah. Not that Sometime high, next year. Yeah, June, July. We, we, we do have a, an issue, though, of getting two of us reappointed to the commission. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Valerie, you had a oh, question? Didn't you say, um, yeah. like, that some yeah. of the some things of that we've talked about here kind of applies across mm -hmm. a lot of the, okay. the rest of it, section it, two. So that's something before yeah, we, we meet again. Yeah, so we can, would it be possible to have an attempt at some of the things that applies to more than one of those sections? Well, and I guess that's where the, the hope this evening was to, to finish this chapter in terms of flagging. Okay, we've talked about this before. We've talked about this before. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think... Um, one of the points that's different is the mobile home park recognizing that needs to be restructured. But, um, uh, I mean, a lot, the, but you know, yeah, um, we were really trying to minimize the back and forth and the, the edits just to keep it moving, but, um. Well, at some point, we're going to have to figure out where's a finalization point. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the fantasy was 
um, <laughs> I'm entitled to them <laughs> to get through this and bring you back the, the new and improved version that incorporates everything we flagged and that you guys would go, oh, that's fabulous. You heard us perfectly. And then we would do the public hearings. <laughs> and we still will. We still will. We just, it just might be a little more time in between that, that you than you were just like originally June envisioning. <laughs> June or July, maybe. You would be more on the um, same time frame that the uh, comprehensive plan ended up being on. You know, it went a lot longer than it was supposed to. Just that I, I, I yeah, don't it, want to be present. But, but it's important. So. It just it just takes time and there's a lot of detail here. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I don't have like three people on staff to just crank through this, you know, and, and turn stuff around for the next meeting. It just it that resource is not there. Karen, your first your first priority should be to the citizens. <laughs> they walk through the door, they want to do a garage, they want to do a new house. Your second priority ought to be the planning commission. We're, we're behind the citizens. So your time ought to be allocated to serve them first. I would agree. And, and not to yeah. just put everything together. It takes time to put all these changes. Very, very well It'd be nice to see yeah. that. But yeah. your, your point of time and commitment and, and resources priorities <laughs> has to be to the um, citizens. I would agree. Um, Karen, I was going to offer this. So, you know, currently where I work, we use a lot of interns. I don't know if maybe that would be a possibility. We don't always pay our interns because we're giving them time for school. Because I know sometimes your budget might not be there and it might not have that. But if you can, if we can maybe figure out how to get a couple of interns in here that will help you do some of the mundane stuff so you, you can kind of prioritize different. That might not be a bad idea to reach out. We're on the commission until food for thought yeah you have to answer but food for thought if only january so work session december 8th moving forward for the document we have in front of us it's on hopefully more expedited process any last comments before we adjourn no just thank you yeah thank you guys very much for your time and your your consideration of everything and your your feedback tonight i appreciate you catching little things and, and um, it, like I said, if nothing else, it gives us all insight into the challenges at a staff level in terms of trying to explain what you can and cannot do in the city of Woodland Park. <laughs> all good here, guys. All right, very good, Ken. See you again. Be there. Uh, it's 927 and uh, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you all.